So when Nick said, I say that we should not leave this capital until Donald Trump is inaugurated president. What did he mean by this? If this happened in one county, in one single county, it would be the biggest election fraud story in the history of the entire planet. To distill your position, a statement one could logically derive from what you just said would be, um, in some cases, it is not okay to engage in self-defense against somebody who is genociding you. You, mu you must believe that then, yes? Um, yeah, essentially. There's a war on white people in this country, and we're fucking sick of it, okay? We built this country. European whites built this country, bitch. I'm trying to be relatively consistent on my platform over the past few years. I'm like, okay, hey, listen, violence probably isn't the answer. Violence probably is a good thing. Right. And on the other end, you two guys are at the Capitol screaming that we need to evict no, lawmakers from the White House or from the Capitol he's building. He's building. So you're against uh, all uses of, of force then, Nick. You are, that's like a big yeah. no-go for you. Okay, so then when yeah. last year you said our founding fathers would get in the streets oh, and they would take this hour. country back by force if necessary? Mm. Wait, yeah, I can make... Hold on, hold on. Nick, 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 Nick. Okay, I got something for... Okay, gross, sick... <laughs> I know that there is like, I, I can make this a bit better for you. Gross I, think, and twisted. I think this is what you prefer a bit more, right? Yeah. Stuff like this. Oh, this is like your, is, yeah. more your aesthetic. That exists like online, like Rose. Yeah, like you guys can find like people that have like a hundred subs and shit. Not, I'm sorry, that's not me. Wow, what the f destiny? Is this really how we're gonna go? First the yesterday, the opening statement drama, and now this shit? Are you f serious, destiny? I have a problem with destiny now. Officially, right now, half an hour before debate. I am no longer on friendly terms with Destiny. Just, we're just POV. You are Brittany from Politically Provoked, FBI handler. And you're watching her through her webcam. That's what this is right now. I hope I'm muted, hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm muted, we're fine. <laughs> okay, hold on, let's psychoanalyze. Brittany here. Does she look worried? Does she look All distressed? All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to Politically Provoked, an interactive podcast where we host debates, panels, and interviews. I am your host, Brittany. We are <laughs> we are going to do this tonight. This is happening. So we are we were supposed to do this last night, and, um, you know, things happen. But we are all going to be here tonight, and we are going to do a fun panel. We're going to make it up, and it's going to be a good show. So I'm really looking forward to this. So let's bring on our our guests first up let's bring on mr rose wrist hello hey, rose, hi so yeah if you want to introduce yourself tell people where you lie on the political spectrum and where people can find you yeah i'm a swedish progressive social democrat and the main place where i upload my content is youtube under the name rose wrist okay um all right next up let's bring on Mr. Pog Collector, <laughs> how are you? Hello, it is Baked Alaska here. Glad everyone is here. Glad we were able to reschedule. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me cozy.tv slash Baked Alaska. I am a January 6th defendant. Freeyoba.com is my legal fund. Good to be here. <laughs> Okay, and uh, let's bring on, uh, <laughs> next let's bring on, Nick. what's going on with my mouse? There we go. How are you tonight, Nick? Hey. Hey. I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. So, I mean, I don't think you really need much introduction, but if you want to introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick Fuentes. I am a live streamer. Uh, apologies, by the way, for my absence yesterday. I thought I was going to be able to make it, but I got caught up uh, at the cookout with uh, Bryce and Gray. Um, but I'm I'm glad we're able to reschedule quickly, so uh, I'm excited for this debate or discussion. It's going to be fun. Yeah, and now we're waiting on Destiny for a few minutes. I think he might be punishing you a little bit. He is. He <laughs> is. I think he might no. be because he's live, but he might be getting even right now. He's but, toying um, with me. Yeah, he'll be here in a few minutes. <laughs> if I can be here on time after what I was put through yesterday, he should be able to, okay? That's just how it is. Yes. True, true. He'll be here. He will be here. He's live. He's got it in his title, so he's going to be here in a couple of minutes. Looks like he's got a uh, intro screen. So, uh, Nick, how are you? Yeah, go ahead. Good. My debate <laughs> part, Dude, I was taking these guys on myself yesterday, Pause. so it's nice to have a uh, partner now. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, now, now, we, now we'll take them together. Yeah. I, it'll be pretty easy. We got like 
this guy looks like i don't know harry potter with aids and then we got destiny it's gonna be easy sounds dude. very be... strong coming from somebody who looks like a discount joe exotic but that's okay we'll, oh! we'll set it like this all right hey that's fired hey he started it okay he started it. Hey, no, i'll take that i like tiger king he's cool all right, well, there i we mean go. he is gay but like he's cool he's funny excellent all right. Yeah, Tuesday, I'm excited. Tuesday. It's gonna be fun. I uh, I wish I had a chance to shower though. I just woke up like a half hour ago. Wait, isn't it so, like, yeah. like, I'm mean, like late evening or like kind of evening for you there? No? Yeah, it's like Bro, seven o'clock. Get your get your coffee, man. We need you 110. percent You got your. I thought you said this was gonna be easy, and now you need him at 110 percent to beat us. What is this? Baked. Well, we need a little coffee in the system. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, let me let me grab the coffee machine. Let me. Or you know what? I don't have water. Damn it. Okay. No coffee then. Where That's where are you? You're out of town. Um, oh, oh, there he is. There he is. Hello. <laughs> there he is. Hello. My DFF. <laughs> All right, Destiny, introduce yourself. Did you do this on purpose? You came late to punish me. No. Shut up. Rose called me. He wasted my time. Um, I called um, you for like a minute. Pops, okay? And it was important, all right? A minute, like, Swedish time, okay? Uh -huh, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know, you'll figure it out. You guys are smart over there. Um, hi, I'm Destiny. I do far left, center left, far right, fashy, comic content. I don't know what the fuck you people say I do, but yeah, what's up? Alrighty. Hey. So it looks like I'm on my own tonight, so that'll be fun. Um, Alright, so here is what we're going to do. I know that Rose and uh, Destiny, or it's going to be mostly Rose, but each person would have about five minutes. It's going to be mostly me. Person. Well, isn't that what you guys said? I think it was pretty even between us, right, Destiny? Isn't that how it was? Um, yeah. All right, there we go. We're good. Yeah. Okay. All right, fine. Well, anyways, we're going to do two topics. The first topic will be about January 6th, basically. If you think it was an insurrection, if you think that people have been treated fairly, um, obviously we'll want to hear what's been going on with Baked, even though he kind of told a little bit last night, but I think you can go into more details if he wants. Um, nothing that'll get you into any kind of trouble, though, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, I know Rose is going to go first for openings. We have about like five minutes each or 10 minutes per team. Um, so you can, I think Rose might go a little over and then Destiny will get the gist of it. So it'll be all Rose, then Baked, then Destiny, then Nick. So um, yeah, Rose, why don't you get started with openings then? All right, excellent. So. At 2.13 p.m. on January 6th, 2021, the first of the Trump-supporting rioters entered the Capitol building. They had been brought there by belief in a conspiracy that the election was being stolen and that they could prevent this from happening by storming the Capitol. This conspiracy was propagated by Trump, Republican lawmakers, and the conservative media, including both members of our opposition for today's debate. This conspiracy is patently false. Trying to save your democracy is a noble ambition. However, the biggest threat to democracy on that day were not the lawmakers conducting the legitimate, peaceful transfer of power, but the rioters who attempted to interfere with that process. Claims that the election are stolen are completely and utterly unfounded, with no legitimate evidence to match the claims made. Lawsuit after lawsuit, case after case fell in courts. In courts, by the way, with judges that were largely appointed by Trump himself. The conservative Supreme Court declined to hear their cases since they had no legitimate legal standing. With both control of the executive and the judicial branch, no attempts to overturn the 2020 election could hold its ground. Trump's own attorney general, William Barr, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Justice, and the Department of Homeland Security all affirmed the legitimacy and security of the 2020 election. In fact, they even go as far as to call this election the most secure in American history. Furthermore, we also have evidence pointing to dishonest motivation for these Republican investigations, such as Trump's Find Me 11,780 Votes incident. In response to this truth, we may see a wide range of flimsy counterarguments presented by the opposition, such as, well, what about mail-in ballots? Just as with the overall election, there is no credible evidence that mail-in ballots are unreliable, and they may have been a secure, they have been a secure staple of US elections for decades. While it is true that mail ballots are marginally more likely to be fraudulent than in-person ballots, it is still more likely for an American to be struck by lightning than to commit mail voting fraud. As such, if Republicans are so concerned with the impact of their voting share caused by the use of mail-in ballots, they could just urge their constituents to remain indoors during thunderstorms for a similar effect. Despite this, the opposition may still want to squabble about the tiny amount of fraudulent votes, in which case they have to grapple with the fact that, once again, out of the very limited instances of voter fraud, most of them are due to mistakes and clerical errors, not organized efforts, as well as the fact that not all fraudulent ballots are cast for Democrats. 
We may also see the conspiratorial film 2000 Mules be referenced during this debate. This film has been extensively debunked, and at the end of the day, there's a reason why it's a film and not a court case. Ultimately, there are no sound arguments for the election fraud conspiracy, and at this point, maybe your opposition's only option are absurd, non-falsifiable claims such as, well, maybe the Republicans just weren't trying hard enough. We may also see a range of false equivalencies between what happened on January 6th and election conspiracies with democratic instances of demonstration and investigation. What about the BLM riots? First of all, neither I, as you all know probably, nor Destiny support the BLM riots. Secondly, there were over 10,000 BLM demonstrations that occurred over more than a year, of which 94% were peaceful, as opposed to the Capitol riot, which was 100% a riot. Thirdly, just because riots occurred at some BLM demonstrations, that does not excuse the riot at the Capitol. And finally, the fundamental grievances of BLM, those being police brutality and systemic racism, are real. Widespread election fraud is not. Well, what about the Kavanaugh protest? During the Kavanaugh protest, the Capitol was open to the public, unlike on January 6th. In fact, people who demonstrated inside the building stood in line for tickets in order to be allowed to enter. They're also not comparable in terms of violence, as the Kavanaugh protests were peaceful, whereas the Capitol riot was not. Well, what about Russian interference? Isn't that like the election fraud conspiracy? No, it's not. Firstly, Hillary conceded immediately following the election. Trump did not. Trump is still pushing the narrative that he was cheated. Secondly, the Russian investigators did actually lead to several indictments and proved the existence of Russian interference in the presidential election, specifically on social media. The election conspiracy has no such findings. We may also get conspiracies about how the police let them into the Capitol, and such claims betray either a fundamental misunderstanding of riot management or proof that you take 30 second out of context videos as proof. As such, it is barely worth my time in my opening statement. Finally, we may get equally unfounded accusations that Antifa or the FBI were present at the Capitol riots, and you know what? I can't really blame you, because if I was a conservative, I'd think that Baked Alaska was a psyop too. This brings us to Nick Fuentes and Baked Alaska. I have sympathy for those duped into the election conspiracy by demagogues, but very little for the demagogues themselves. The election fraud conspiracies they pushed contributed to the stochastic force that compelled so many Trump supporters to show up at the Capitol. Nick Fuentes and Baked Alaska either knowingly pushed a false conspiracy, or they too were duped into believing it. As such, they're either deliberate liars, or so heavily infected with conservative brain rot that you can safely disregard anything they say. Baked Alaska entered and paraded inside the Capitol building and streamed all the way through, Despite all the talks about conservative prosecution and hyper-politicization of the January 6th charges, he was given a plea deal that merely required him to plead guilty to misdemeanors. A plea deal which, may I add, he almost fumbled because he couldn't hold his tongue in court. Perhaps the prosecution was so lenient with him because of how very helpful his livestream was in identifying other rioters. Fuentes, on the other hand, was smart enough not to enter the Capitol building, although he had no issues inciting his fans to do so. In conclusion, January 6th riot was a violent event that resulted in millions of dollars of damages, hundreds of injuries, a half dozen deaths, and a unique assault on the peaceful democratic transition of power, all driven by a bogus theory pushed by Trump, Republican lawmakers, the conservative media, and the two members of our opposition in today's debate. Thank you. Okay, um, Bates, if you wanna... Okay, uh, yeah, well, first of all, there's a lot of personal stuff in there uh, for an opening statement, I thought we were focused on January 6th, Buffalo shooting. Okay, interesting. And we'll open the floor after everybody gives their openings. And um... <laughs> Yeah, very, very, very interesting there. Thank you for that, Rose. All right, well, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, let's see. Where did, I, I, I don't... I don't know where to start with this, but um, I haven't seen 2,000 mules. Obviously, there was fraud. There was major fraud in the 2020 election. Uh, there's so much evidence of it. You know, Trump got more votes than Obama, yet you want us to believe that Joe Biden, the lowest approval-rated president of all time, I believe— Got more votes than Trump with zero energy. No one's showing up at his rallies. You know, it, it really does not add up there. So, you know, we'll get more into that. But obviously, there's so much proof about the fraud. There's so much proof about the fraud, about Trump absolutely dominating in 2020, just like he did in 26 or 16, sorry. And, you know, we're going to we're going to prove that today um, as far as like all the uh, personal shots or whatever. I mean, you're not even a fucking American. I don't know where you come from, uh, but I actually was at January 6th. I was arrested by the feds. Um, you can keep simping 
for you know global corporate entities all you want you know it's i find it so interesting too the left loves corporations now isn't that funny you know they started this whole occupy wall street thing oh wow now they're simping for the corporations okay but you know what i say i say fuck the feds fuck the corporations yes i am fighting this legal battle in court and you say oh you know 100 percent of it was a riot that's not true people have already been fucking acquitted you idiot look at the court logs dude like you're so lost i mean you're not even american you're so out of touch with this shit it's not even funny that was embarrassing i mean you're reading off like a fucking mainstream media cheat sheet there you know good job Woo! great job with your stats there buddy <laughs> you know that that was boring as shit but listen i'm a real human being so is nick we're real american patriots we didn't believe in a lie or conspiracy theory like your globalist overlords want to tell you, but uh, Trump won the election in 2020. There was a largely peaceful protest. BLM sucks. They are not peaceful. And, uh, you know, we're just going to prove that here today. So good to be here, guys. Thank you. All right, Destiny. Get in there. Uh, I mean, obviously, I agree with everything that Rose Chris said. Um, it's hard to say that it's not going to be personal when you are both kind of like personally involved in this. Um, I mean, there's going to be some level of, of personal investment. There's going to be some level of like personal indictment um, throughout the course of this conversation, I imagine. Um, I am excited to talk about the evidence, I guess, for fake ballots or for a rigged election or for there to be so much fraud that it would have changed the outcome of any of the states that were important in actually determining the outcome of the election. Um, I do agree with what Baked Alaska said um donald trump did indeed get more votes than obama but unfortunately there was one other guy that got more votes than obama too and he got even more votes than donald trump and that was joe biden and at the end of the day well really that's not even all that counts what counts is the electoral college which trump also tried to stop by the way um and he was unable to do so successfully but um yeah there uh the the january 6 riots themselves wouldn't necessarily be a problem. Fighting for your democracy is a noble cause. It's just a little bit sad when there are players, both politically, lawmakers, or the president, and players in terms of activism or YouTube, like Bank Alaska or Nick Fuentes, that are kind of misleading people into believing that the election was stolen, which is causing them to take these violent actions, which is what we'll probably be talking about today. Yeah. All right, Nick. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I guess the first claim here is about January 6th and that people went there to try to stop the actual counting of the electoral votes. And I would dispute that characterization because um, there were approximately 500,000 people in D.C. that day. And if you recall, Donald Trump himself held a rally on the ellipse outside the White House that morning. Um, I actually have learned since some of these indictments came out, for example, against Stuart Rhodes and against Enrique Tarrio, that the militias may have planned to disrupt the Electoral College, meaning there was a premeditated plan uh, to breach the Capitol and then occupy the Capitol for the purpose of obstructing the act of Congress. I didn't know that at the time. I think most people didn't know that at the time. That was strictly two groups. I think the number of people that have been charged with conspiracy is between 50 and 100. So you have 500,000 people there, and the people actually charged with conspiracy. In, in other words, that there was a premeditated effort to go in there and prevent the count. That was a very, very small percentage of the actual people there. I think most people there, most people that were present at the Capitol on 1-6 didn't breach, and most people that breached I think did that in a way that was not premeditated. I think that, you know, if you look at a guy like Baked Alaska as an example, I don't think, and I know him, that he planned on storming the Capitol to stop the count. I think they went to the Capitol, they were met with police barricades, the barricades were pushed back, the cops were pushed back. And I think some people pushed inside the Capitol and then they were cleared out. And this is evidenced by the fact that a lot of them didn't really even have a plan. It's not like these people went in there and said, okay, here's our map, here, we're going here. You know, people are taking pictures, people are walking within the velvet robes, people are acting like tourists, they're not carrying firearms, they're not carrying weapons, they're not wearing armor. Um, so when you look at who, if anybody, had a plan to stop the count, uh, it's a fraction of the people, it's a small fraction of the people that breached, and the people that breached are a small fraction of the people that were there. 
the vast majority of people that were there on 1-6, including myself and Baked Alaska, were there to peacefully protest the last sort of major constitutional date before a new president was inaugurated. I can tell you I had no intentions. My idea of January 6th was I was going there, and it was like the last, you know, the last get-together before the Biden administration. I had no hope that Mike Pence was going to do the things that Republicans wanted him to do. Uh, my plan was to attend the Trump rally, and then I had made dinner plans at like 5 o'clock that evening to, to go meet with friends, and I was going to go shoot an interview with Alex Jones and do something for my documentary. Um, so, so I dispute the characterization that, that like a lot or even most, or vice versa, most or even a lot of the people that were there had some kind of plan to obstruct the counting of the vote and disrupting the process. I don't think that's borne out by the facts. And we could see the facts in the indictments. Those are all public. All the, all the complaints filed by the DOJ in connection with the six are publicly searchable in a database. And the last time I checked, which was recently, the number of conspiracy charges is like 50 to 100 out of 500,000. And even if you're being conservative about the numbers, maybe it's a quarter of a million. At the most, it's a half million people. Either way, 100 out of a quarter million or a half million isn't a lot. Um, then you get to the issue of election fraud. And I'll say this, you know, for us to be successful in this debate, we don't need to prove necessarily that there was fraud that pushed the election in favor of Biden. All we have to do is prove that there is a reasonable doubt about the validity of the election, which I think is a far simpler task. And what I mean by this is when you look at Arizona, Arizona is the only state that has conducted an independent ballot audit to date. And what they found is over 100,000 discrepancies in the vote. Now, Donald Trump only lost Arizona by a margin of 10,000 votes. The independent ballot audit has delivered over 100,000 discrepancies. Now, we don't need to necessarily know exactly what those are or what the outcome would be if those weren't there. It's sufficient to say that you know, if the discrepancies are 10 times greater than the than the margin, than the margin of difference between the two candidates, that the whole contest has to be tossed out. The whole contest, you can't, like, go through 100,000 ballots and say, hmm, I think this one's good and this one's bad. You just have to throw the election out and say it's not legit, which is what people are saying during the steal. And those were, and that's the only state that's conducted, there were states that conducted recounts and there were states that conducted other things, but the only states that conducted a proper audit, the only state is Arizona in 2021, and they delivered a large enough number of discrepancies that you could reasonably say this election may not have been fair. The other thing is this, you know, I think that the election fraud narrative would make a lot less sense any other year, except that this 2020 election had more non-traditional votes than any other election in history by far. You had more than 40% of the ballots cast by mail in 2016, it was only 20% cast by mail. So you had double the amount of mail-in ballots. And mail-in ballots are obviously susceptible to fraud. You know, Rose, you said, oh, you have a greater chance of being struck by lightning than having a, a fake ballot or something. When you have millions of ballots being solicited, meaning sent to people's homes, and then the ballots show up at drop boxes, and that accounts for 40%, 69% of the ballots are uh, early voting or mail-in ballots. This is a completely non-traditional election. And I think it's fair to say, you know, even if you disagree with our conclusions, I think it's fair to say that a, an election which has more non-traditional voting than ever before deserves more scrutiny than ever before. If this is the first election where you've got nearly half of the ballots are cast by mail and that's never happened before, you could say this is unique, this is extraordinary, this is exceptional, and therefore it warrants careful scrutiny. Instead, what people are saying is the reverse. They're saying, no, 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 it's the safest election ever. Really? Because we just went through four years of special counsel and impeachment because uh, some Russian agent paid for Facebook ads in the state of Michigan in 2016. But 40 percent mail-in ballots, you know, we're just going to look at that and say, well, you know, the government said it's OK, so it's OK. Um, you know, in Europe, in France, they outlawed mail-in ballots in the 1970s because of the potential for fraud. And across Europe, many countries have banned mail-in ballots for the same reason. And the reason why is because there's no chain of custody. A mail-in ballot is sent out by the state to the voters' residence, 
And then the next time the state sees the ballot is in a drop box. There's no chain of custody. They don't see an ID. They don't see that the person that that vote was intended for is signing it and voting for it in person, presenting identification. They ship it out. They get it back. No chain of custody. And when that accounts for 40 percent of the ballots, that poses a big problem about the credibility of the election. So I think it's actually extremely fair that during that period from November 3rd until January 6th, people like myself in Baked Alaska were out there protesting and demanding special sessions of the state legislatures to appoint a uh, an independent ballot audit to look at the ballots and verify if the election was legitimate or not. And then if the contest is thrown out, then the state legislatures regain their power to appoint the electors, and then they appoint them in the direction that the state legislature voted. That's that's originally how the Electoral College worked. So, um, you know, so again, if, if we're going to define our terms here, the important thing to keep in mind about the fraud is all we have to prove is that there's a reasonable doubt when you look at these major discrepancies or a possibility for major discrepancies, and, and that's obviously there. And I think the only people that reject that are people that are invested so heavily in a Biden victory. You know, I'm willing to say, oh, maybe Trump is a sore loser or whatever. And I think that would have made a lot more sense in 2016. I think that would have made more sense for Republicans in 12 or 2008. But in 2020, 43 percent mail-in ballots, this warrants extra careful scrutiny, and it didn't get that. So that's my take. All right, we can open up the floor now. And um, we're going to do questions after each topic. So if you guys have questions, you can send them in. We'll try to get to as many as we can, but it's um, through the powerchat.live slash politically provoked. All right. Before we get into the like uh, all the voting mail-in stuff, I just have to one question for Nick Fuentes. So if you say that you were there just to peacefully protest with Bake Alaska, then why were you outside the Capitol building with a megaphone saying things like, keep moving towards the Capitol. It appears we are taking the Capitol. Keep marching and don't relent. Never relent. Break down the barriers and disregard the police. The capital belongs to us now. Let those politicians know. That's exactly how it should be. These politicians do not represent us. They betray us. And now we're forcibly evicting them from the people's house. They should live in fear of the American people. How does that square with your, your peaceful protest statement? Because we're referring to the Capitol lawn. You know, if you weren't there on that day, maybe you don't know. But the You're evicting them from not. the people's house. That's not the lawn. That's the house. The people's house is the Capitol complex. Uh, the house that isn't referred to the building. That... Yeah, yeah, the, the entire no, property. What, is really? The house. <laughs> well, you can laugh and you can quibble about the details, but you weren't there on that day. You don't even know what you're talking about. The I mean, technically, Capitol somebody, complex, somebody that wasn't there. Oh, are you going to let me respond? You asked a question. You read out the whole quote. Let, let sure, me well, respond. Well, like saying, like, we're not there isn't a response. You guys all had video, right? right? The grounds, like, legally. Yeah, I know. I, I have it. The video is out there. It's on my phone. Yeah. So the entire Capitol complex was barricaded with metal barriers. And so you had people. And, and if you look on the Capitol complex where I was, I wasn't even close to the building. I wasn't even close. I could provide a map of the Capitol. I could show you exactly where I was. I was outside the lawn. How do you and evict so people standing, from the people lawn? I'm really towards, curious about how that works, Nick. And, and we were, you know, you're going to keep interrupting thing. me because I'm providing the context. See, the problem with the, I think how the debate's going to work is it's not happening in good faith. You know, when you're going to stand there and say, oh, but, 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 you know, you, it was a, it was a chaotic day. I mean, we're out there in like the middle of a world historical moment. And I'll admit for legal reasons, I probably should have chose my words more carefully. But if you look at the geography of where I was standing, the context provides perfect sense or makes perfect sense. I was standing out there. People are marching towards peacefully to protest on the lawn. I said, we're taking the Capitol back, meaning we're, we're occupying the Capitol, surrounding it. People were surrounding the Capitol from the Washington Monument all the way across the reflection pond or whatever that is between the monument and the Capitol and surrounding the Capitol on all sides. I was not referring to the building. I'm referring to the complex saying, we're taking the city back. We're taking the people's house back, uh, you know, and and if I were saying it in any other way, why wouldn't I have breached? If I was saying, you know, we're going in there, whatever. You know, I, I was wearing a suit. I was wearing dress shoes. The idea You're that smart that, enough you know, to know you'll get in trouble quote, for that. It constitutes some premeditated plan. It, it's just not borne out by any of the rest okay, of it. Okay, so, so one simple follow-up question then. How do you forcibly evict politicians from the lawn? How does that work? Well, we're forcibly, well, what they said at the time was that the politicians were running away inside the Capitol because the Capitol was surrounded by 500,000 people. 
if it's surrounded, then how are they getting, like, are they going to, wouldn't that just make them want to stay in there even more? Wouldn't eviction require well, listen, kind of it wasn't a I didn't say that in a courtroom. I said that at a rally. Yeah, yeah so that's regardless of where you said it, right? That's relevant. If you're saying you just came there with peaceful intentions and then you're saying stuff like this, I it did. begs a few well, questions. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If I came in there with anything other than peaceful intentions, why would I come in dress shoes and no weapons? Well, and no tactical gear. The rest to stop the steal, I wore a bulletproof vest and a bomber jacket. If I was trying to breach the Capitol or forcibly evict anybody, note that I have not a single time said that there, you were trying to get into the Capitol. Why would I tie and dress shoes and no armor and no weapons? It just doesn't make any sense. Why would Wait, I? That's like saying this is like saying if a general. This is like saying if a general wants to win a war, why isn't he on the front lines fighting with his troops? True. Like no, I mean, it's not obviously, like it, well, it's not on. like absolutely, that at all. It absolutely is right. Like. Anybody not that's listening, close. that can I finish my sentence, please? Uh, that's what's gonna oh, happen. Now we've people are doing a bad oh. thing. I let you finish. For, I let you talk for so long. Okay? <laughs> All right. You're right. The, the, the idea, the, the idea, obviously, that you're gonna show up with a megaphone to tell people to evict who from the the lawn? Do they have mole rats? Do they have like w what's going on out there that we're, we're evicting people from the lawn? Like it's pretty obvious, like what the implication is, um, especially if you're gonna use words around the election, like well, what's like a reasonable doubt, right? The idea that you showed up and you weren't ready yourself to run in because you've got a thousand people. In in front of you that you know that you can scream at or go on to run in you know it doesn't exonerate your actions anymore and it doesn't point to you being there as a as a peaceful demonstrator it's pretty clear that your words even if you yourself are saying that well i didn't have the intention of doing that you know what the perception of those words are going to be right if i were to give a, a megaphone to a black person put them downtown seattle and have them screaming we're going to evict the capital owners from their businesses i don't think you would be on the america first program saying you know i think that uh, i think that jamal what he was saying was he just wanted to clean the sidewalks up right you'd be saying he's sending people into those businesses to tear them down to take the people on the street to beat the shit out of them that's exactly what you would be saying and I think it's pretty fair to say that it's probably the same thing that was going on in January 6th. You're goading the audience on, you're goading the crowd on, you can tell that people are trying to break in or are breaking into the Capitol building, and you're telling people to get in there and evict the legislatures from their from the lawmakers' house. Like pretty obvious what's going on. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. And and the thing is, both of you um weren't there. You know, me and Baked Alaska are primary Hold sources. On. Oh, okay. I will interrupt you. you when you say this. You can't say we weren't there. We have you video. Were the, you, you weren't there. there. That's, not there? A, that's not an argument. It's not we, we, have, we have an video. Argument. We can we watch. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We have all wait, the video. Wait. Hang on, hang on. Of course it's an argument. It's an argument because you're, you're taking a 20-minute video, 25-minute video from the day of. We were there on the ground. We were there. We participated. Okay, do we want to do Brittany, Do we want to do like the um? Do we want to do the Buffalo argument? We 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 me and Rose automatically lose. If that if it's if what? their whole argument is just we weren't there. I mean, no, no one can count it. No, but that way, they ultimately you have the it. That's like the key. Wait, no, wait, no. I, 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 we, we, we have another. We were there. Like, I mean, you win. Damn. Like, I didn't even. I didn't even consider the back of the argument. We weren't there. Oh my goodness. Brittany, you got you got to introduce a little control here. Are we on or what? So okay, so uh, I think Bake was trying to say something, right? Well, hey, no, I got a response. No, to the first go, ahead, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. No, the, talking, I don't know. So the argument, the argument about uh, January sixth is that if you look at the indictments, you know, the federal government is going after ev everybody that they can. You know, that's what they said at the beginning. They said we're going after the e celebs first, and now they're cracking down on the militias. The indictments for conspiracy for militia groups is between 50 and 100. In other words, the people that – conspiracy meaning that they plotted to breach. This is a fraction. That's the argument. Is me that and Rose, that's not the argument we're making. Hold on. Me and Rose, to be clear, we're not interrupting me again. We'll go with uh, Nick and then – He's addressing an argument. He's addressing an argument that no one is making. Yeah, go for it. No one is about to make the argument that he's I mean, if you just talk over us, then yeah. Who do you think has talked most so far, Nick? Out of everybody here, who do you think has talked most? All right, all right. Then Nick finish, then Destiny, and then whatever. <laughs> so, so the that was the argument I made in my opening statement. Now, this uh, this other guy, this uh, guy with the glasses, comes on and says, "Oh, uh, but what about the speech that you gave? Doesn't that, isn't that evidence? Isn't well, clearly not because the DOJ doesn't think it's sufficient evidence, and the FBI doesn't think it's sufficient evidence because if they did, they would have charged me. But a twenty five minute speech on the Capitol, and and the reason I say you weren't there is." You don't understand Manny, the context of what was happening. happening. You don't know where okay. you don't know where the speech was happening. You don't know the context of when and the rest of the turn of events. You know uh, about generals and storming the Capitol. We were there for probably like sixty minutes, and, and we were so far from the Capitol steps. The idea that we were Brittany, telling seriously, people, can you put a time? Nothing. None of this is relevant. Again, it doesn't make sense minute. because 
you weren't there. You didn't experience that part of it. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Just, so, I mean, are we going to have a debate? If you're just going to talk over my whole answer, I mean, what what are we even doing here, right? I mean, but the thing is, your answer isn't addressing debate. anything that we're yeah, saying. Anyway, Destiny was next. We'll do one minute um interval so that people are not interrupting. Um, sure. I, I, I it'll take me ten seconds, and then Rose will be once. But like like. Just to be very clear, neither me nor Rose are making the argument that you had a pre-planned conspiracy to do anything. N none of us have made that argument. You That's had an interview. That's what Rose said. You, no. Hey, hold, on, hold, on. hold on. It's a. Uh, no, I don't believe. I don't believe Rose said that. Yes. None of ne neither of us. Now Nick said it in his opening argument. And now he's arguing against the straw man that he presented his opening argument. What me and Rose have said was that your presence at that area was to goad people on. That doesn't require a conspiracy. That doesn't require pre-planning. Like you can do that in the heat of the moment, right? Like you, that's 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 the argument we're making. So if you want to respond to that, you can. If you want to ramble again about indictments and lack of conspiracy stuff, you can do that again for a minute, but like neither of us are making that argument. So well, the initial, the initial argument that he made in his opening statement was that Trump supporters plan to stop the vote in Congress. That was, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but in the opening statement, which he read out, so he's got the text of it, he said that the Trump supporters, their, their plan, their mission was to stop the vote from happening. Once they were there, implies, once they were there, but there's oh, there, how many? Once we were there, so, the, so oh, we we're okay. planning on the fly. So wow. it's yeah, entirely. Cool. It's called a riot. That's what a riot is. Oh it's my. planning on the fly. Like for instance, having oh, a guy yeah. with a megaphone screaming things into a crowd that didn't pre-plan it. That's exactly what it is. Yes, big. You so got it, it, it's very simple, right? So yeah. you don't need any organization from this. But if you're making an idea that this is this is happening, there is an election well, fraud going on, statement. and this the, is excuse me, are you going to interrupt me right now, Nick? After all that, I never even got to talk. I never even got to talk. They're terrified. They let me speak once, and I had that quote. Now they don't want to let me speak okay, again. We'll have okay. One minute uninterrupted when, when you guys do it, though. All, All right, right, there ahead. we go. Okay, cool. Baked. So once again, we neither me or Destiny are making the argument that this was like an organized plot by a set of people who tried to get everybody to go there and everybody was in on it and they were on fucking like walkie talkies or whatever. That, that's not our argument. Our argument is simply this: you have a bunch of actors, Trump included, you guys included, who are building into this idea, this conspiracy that the election is being stolen. And as part of that conspiracy is the belief that hey, right now. If there, we go in there and you interrupt the stuff that's going on in the Capitol, we can save the election. That doesn't mean that those individual actors are planning and coordinating, hey, you guys go over there, you guys break in there, you guys do this there. It just means that everybody's building into this idea, and this idea <laughs> drove people to take this action. It's really not that complicated. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But to see, that's just ridiculous. That's a great it's, argument. We're, we're building, we're building into a concept. What the fuck does that even mean? We we participated in building into a concept of. Read we what you said in your opening statement because you okay. wrote your opening statement down. So reread that part of it because you now you're shifting the goalpost. What I, did you say? Exactly what I said is going to be is going to be perfectly congruent with what I just told you. So this is what I said. Okay. They've been back. brought there by a belief in a conspiracy that the election was being stolen and that they could prevent this from happening by storming the capital. Nothing about organization, nothing about like people coordinating shit, just talking about the idea, the conspiracy. You said they were brought there by the belief that they could stop the vote from happening. And nobody <laughs> That's thought a belief, that they that's not organization. That. Nobody thought that they except for the small number of militia members who did have walkie-talkies and did have they, you know there were probably 50 to 100 of them indicted because they did bring walkie-talkies and body armor and some brought weapons. Um, but the rest of the people, you, you know, you look at Trump's speech on the ellipse and Trump said, we're going to go to the Capitol and peacefully protest. That's in the Trump speech. And so okay, wait, can, can, I, can I hear you? I need to talk. I need to talk real quick. Oh, yeah, Bake has been waiting for a while. So let, let me come. So the reason that Nick keeps saying like you weren't there, it's not to be like, haha, you weren't there or, or whatever. Like the point I think he's trying to make and, and what I would make is that it was such a like the capital grounds and like so many things were going on like me and nick never saw each other that day to be clear like i never i didn't see him at all not like not even from a distance or anything that's how chaotic it was the cell service was down we we didn't know what was going on um so where he was like I don't even think he knew people were going into the Capitol or maybe like where I was even like, I, I was like, wait, people are climbing up these barricades. I don't really know what they're doing. Like you guys just made it seem like everyone's going there with this belief that we're going to go into the Capitol and we're going to stop the vote. That's simply not true. We literally have just proved that we had no fucking clue what was going on. Me and Nick being best friends didn't know being in the same area didn't know what was going on. There was no coordinated plan. It was a peaceful protest. Trump said, go walk over to the Capitol. 
That's what we did. Me as a live streamer, I followed the action. I was peaceful. I wasn't violent with anyone. I didn't hurt anyone. And also, like, you guys are- Wait, can I, can I ask you a question, Baked Alaska? No, no, Just on that. Yeah, wait, let, Small no, question. Let, let him finish. He still has his like, right, no, okay. Seriously, shut up, dude. <laughs> and, and then I think Destiny was next, but- uh, Listen, let, let me, I'm going to finish, and then Destiny can go. When Nick, what, I, I, I wasn't there. I didn't hear what Nick said, but it's like, you can't- <laughs> talk in such bad faith like if if i say oh we got to get hillary out of office like that doesn't mean we're gonna like gonna go in there and wrap her up and throw her out of the house like by him saying we need to get people out of there like don't take that so literally holy okay, shit I, so i have a simple like, question for you then baked no, that, that's all I well, well destiny did you want to go or do you want to give it yeah, to well, I, I, oh, yeah wait i have a i have a simple question oh. i'm sorry i have i have to hear this okay i just i want to see the because i like to read the threads after and i want to see the quote so I want to hear, I want to hear Baked Alaska Nick then, if what you're saying is true. I just want to hear an admission of this. So you guys accepted that the election was over, even if it was cheating, and you were just going to go to cuck protest knowing that nothing you were going to do was change the outcome, but you wanted to show that. up and like, so, so you were going there with the goal of changing the outcome or not? No, no, I had no goal. There was a hope that we could audit the election and get a fair result. Wait, hold on, hold on. Oh. You were going to audit it at the Capitol? Or, uh, I, this is, okay, hold on. Wait, no, let's get Nick, hold on. Let's Destiny, I have on. a really relevant quote oh, yeah, if you me, want one. We were putting pressure on lawmakers. Destiny, finish your question because you were... I'm trying. Okay, okay, we'll let Nick answer. So I just want to hear Nick say, I want you so you're saying like, yes, Destiny, I went to the Capitol and I just wanted to protest with my friends. We knew that we weren't going to change the outcome. There was no pressure on the lawmakers we knew that wasn't a realistic thing we were just kind of going there to show how angry we were that's that's yeah literally literally, okay. literally that's right. exactly because here's the thing that's all there i want to hear no, that's my library. That's, i just want to hear that yeah no because there were several dates leading up to the six where like there was a deadline for the election to be certified and there was a you know there were a lot of deadlines leading up to that where we were going out to state capitals and we thought that the state legislature had a reasonable chance at overturning the outcome of their particular the result of their contest. When we went out there for the sixth, I almost didn't even go because I said, what's the point? At that point, we were hoping that Mike Pence was going to like not count certain electoral votes. And we thought that would be a long shot. The only reason I went out to the six is because I had VIP tickets to go to the Trump rally. And I thought this is like one last hurrah. You know, we're going to go see our friends. Because, you know, during that time, we saw all our friends from all across the country every other week for these protests. And so, you know, all my friends were going. They were all going to be at the uh, Ellipse rally. So I said, hey, I got this, these VIP tickets. We're going to go see Trump one last time. We're going to sit in the front row. And then that's it. I was going to get dinner with a friend that evening. We were going to do shoot some uh, some footage for our documentary. And then that was going to be it, honestly. I, and I said that on my show. That's backed up by sure, we believe my it. show. Wait, Baked Alaska is like on a phone there saying things oh, like, we, like yeah. oh, yeah, go ahead, Rose. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. so very short question, very short, simple question. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, really quick. Was, were you finished, Nick, before? Yeah. Okay, okay so, then, so just, then go ahead, Rose. Very short question either to Baked or to Nick. So when Nick said, I say that we should not leave this capital until Donald Trump is inaugurated president, what did he mean by this? You meant it's when I said we're not more. leaving it till Trump is inaugurated <laughs> president, we're, say we're saying that we're protesting outside the Capitol until Mike Pence does the right thing and doesn't count the votes. I'm Wait, sure. so the goal was then to affect the outcome? Well, when we were there on the protest, yeah. Because Trump said you're going to go out to the Capitol and make your Wait, voice hold on, heard. Did I just have a fucking stroke? I thought you just said that wasn't the goal. I thought no, you the were goal was not to breach the Capitol and suspend the vote from occurring. You're talking about two different things. What Trump said was go to the lawn, make your voices heard, which is what we did. Yeah. That's what make I did. your voices I heard, no, apparently, heard. until Listen, Donald saying, Trump is inaugurated president. What you said, what you said was there. What you were building into the idea of suspending the vote by breaching the Capitol and uh, and the rest of it. So okay, but let's, say, let's, say, let's say that I grant you all that. Okay, let's say we're <laughs> we're in a very winding trail right now. I'm sorry. Well, I, well I think like I'm in the hotel the and it's shining, okay? Well, let, let, so let's say I agree with you. So you're there well, yeah. to protest, not to get the lawmakers to change their mind, but hopefully to get Pence to change his mind. And then you're shouting that you want to evict people from the capital but you want to evict them from the lawn not the actual capital no and no no like, no like, so yeah now, you, i'm no, sorry no, i'm getting no, no, now you're no, 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 now you're arguing no, 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 no,
Okay. No, I'm, yeah. trying, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to put it you all are. together. So no, tell me. You yeah, are. You no, are. no, no, no. I agree. I agree. There, there, there's being condescending oh. tone because you're not arguing. No, no. Fan. Destiny's making another like I assumption. Wasn't there, so I'm asking you. Goalposts. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. You're right. Is. Destiny's making an assumption. There. Okay. There, there is. There, there, there's. There, there, there's something else. All right. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Rose. Rose. Go ahead. Yeah. There's something else we could easily add. So you're right. Destiny was just. What? Are you scared, ladies? I thought it was bad faith, though. Yeah. That's a bad faith question. You need to respond. It's okay. That that Destiny's question was a bad faith question. You only need to respond to this one okay only this one so uh when you said storm every state capital until january 20th 2021 until president trump is inaugurated for four more years what did you mean by that exactly what we did do you know what we did in the state capitals between november 3rd and and january 20th there are lots of occupied lawns i'm sure yeah (laughs) exactly there were Okay. When we said we're going to go to the state capitals from November 3rd until January 20th, what did we do in the state capitals? Did we did we breach the capital and evict it? No, we went there and protested and we demanded that the Republican state legislatures inside recast the elector votes for Trump, which is exactly what we did on January 6th. Go figure. What, 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 go what, on the Capitol lawn and demand that Mike Pence not read the elector votes from the states where there was fraud. It's, it's honestly, though, it's disappointing because I think that the strength of your argument on the fraud doesn't work. So now you no, no, we'll go to the fraud. I promise you, we'll go to the fraud right now. Now you want to so, interrupt me. Yeah, let so me I think, and then go. I think that what you're trying to do now is getting into the semantics of rhetoric. You know, when you're giving a speech to, uh, you know, 500,000 people or, or a crowd where there's 500,000 people, you know, I didn't take the stand. I didn't swear an oath and say, oh, you know, every everything that I'm saying should be judged a year later. Uh, it's rhetoric. We're on the Capitol lawn. But you want to make it personally. You want to make it about me. Let's make it about the facts. Was there a significant amount of people that had a premeditated plan to breach the Capitol and prevent the votes from being counted? No. That didn't exist. There were 500,000 people there, and only 150 to 100 people got indicted for conspiracy. That's the facts. And if the DOJ and the FBI, which want to see me in jail more than anybody, you know, the DOJ said they were focusing on the Internet celebrities first. That's what Michael Sherwin, who was running the investigation in January, said. He said, we're targeting the e-celebs first. If they felt the same way that you do about that rhetoric, then I would have been indicted for conspiracy. You well, know what? Wasn't. You would be that's correct because you know where because, I got these quotes from, that's Nick? Because there's Actually, no evidence to support that. That's because, given the context of our participation in Stop the Steal until that point and our participation on that day, it doesn't hold water. You well, know, so what do you know that the DOJ doesn't? Nick, you should know that, you know, where these quotes come from because, and you also know that the government knows about these quotes because all these quotes came from a but letter you, they, they came oh. from a letter you received from the select committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol on January 19th, 2022. So you should know perfectly how the government feels about all these quotes. Yeah, what's the argument there? No, I'm just saying that you're like, oh, if the government feels the same way you did, they would have done something different. The government clearly very they would much have indicted me. Quotes. Well, well, wait, wait, but now you're talking about two different things. Now you're tra- talking about two different things. The House Select Committee is congressional oversight. The DOJ is federal law enforcement. The DOJ investigation began immediately after January 6, 2021. The Select Committee didn't issue that subpoena until January 2022. Mm-hmm. Michael Sherwin, who ran the DOJ investigation in January, said... I think after the inauguration, so January, February 21, he said, we're going after the e-celebrities first. That's why they got Baked Alaska right away. That's why they got a lot of these guys right away. Um, Baked Alaska entered the building. You didn't enter the building. They're currently investigating me. But there's no indictment. And there's no indictment because the things that you're saying do not constitute evidence of conspiracy or... Uh, Rick, any, please, we got to do the time. Nick you're rambled implying. so much. Oh my God! Like he's about to start telling us what he ate for dinner. It's a debate. Oh. Dipshit. It's a fucking debate. No, it's a monologue. It's not a matter, not a matter well, of. Well, in, in all fairness, hold on. In all fairness, they are have a little bit more on this than um, probably you guys since they were there. Yeah, well, you're I can't that. believe people are talking during this debate. This is. It's crazy. not a matter of talking. It's it's like it's like saying like, well, what were you doing on the lawn? And it's like, okay, well, you have to understand. In 2017, when I first started doing my YouTube stuff, I was in communication.
communications with a lot of different types of Republicans all across the country. And I wanted to build my kit. Like, you're, it's so much extra shit, right? Obviously, you're trying to obfuscate as much as you can because you don't want to directly answer the questions. But, like, at the very least, Brittany, I think you're gonna, trying to obfuscate. Brittany, if he's gonna, we're not, neither of us. We're being very direct. That's why you've talked for like three uh, times longer than us, right? No, we're Brittany, being direct. We're, we're if he's going to respond, 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 just put it like a minute timer because he, listening to him okay, ramble about a bunch of random shit is so irritating. To be clear, I'm going to reassert. He's responding in this debate. I'm going to reassert for like the 50th time. That's so rich. Neither Rose nor I are asserting that there was a pre-plan that a pre-plan conspiracy existed. Neither me nor Rose coming from motor mouth and so and for Nick to be here and for Nick to be here and be like, well, if there wasn't a pre-plan conspiracy, then are you telling me that this evolved as it happened on the ground? Yeah, welcome to every opening statement. Rose said that. Going somewhere because of the belief of a conspiracy theory is not the same thing as a conspiracy to commit a riot. Those are two uh, totally different oh, okay. things. Do we, wait, do you two mm. really not understand that? Oh, uh, okay. Like if, I, sure, if I have a sure. bunch of friends and we all believe what, in the what was it? What did Rose I, say we were building into the idea? Wait, 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 Sure. So if a whole bunch of people are showing up in an area to protest because they believe in a particular conspiracy theory, like UFOs, and during the course of that protest, things turn into a riot, and then eventually they break in or whatever, and you're like, wow, these guys all showed up because of a conspiracy theory. And then you go, well, the U.S. government didn't charge anybody with conspiracy. Because that criminal charge of conspiracy implies a pre-planned thing to do the riot. You can go to an area because you believe in a conspiracy theory. That's not the same thing as a conspiracy to commit a crime. I don't know why you're making that face. If you seriously, seriously can't understand that, you can't accuse me of being the one operating a bad You know, Destiny is actually making is a difference. really good strategy because by not understanding that, he will be deemed probably mentally incompetent to go to trial later. So <laughs> yeah, now we can yeah, fucking yeah, get yeah. out. <laughs> So All right, so wait, Bake wanted to go next. I think I was addressed uh, in that. Let, let, let right, Nick address that. Would be good. Yeah, so what Rose said is that he, he, here, here's the important thing. And once again, I apologize if I'm rambling during this debate. That's kind of the point. You know, and it's pretty rich a destiny of all people, Mr. <laughs> my sources say that you're going to accuse me of rambling. We're talking about the facts on the ground. Please give me the time on this point yet. So, the on this point. so in your opening statement, you say that we are the, the people that were there, there was this effort to stop the vote from happening. And that, that, that was not a conspiracy before, during, or after. There was no intention to stop the vote. That, that, it's as crystal clear as that. And so, you know, you can say, you can obfuscate this and say, well, we meant conspiracy theory. What he said is the people came there to prevent the vote from going forward. And I said, and I admitted, you know, based on recent indictments, some people, that was their intention. The Proud Boys and the uh, Oath Keepers, it seemed like they had a plan to stop the vote by breaching the Capitol, but they represented a small minority of people that even went in, and the people that went were a small minority of people that were there that day. So, you know, to say, oh, but you gave a speech on the lawn, there was no effort, no meaningful effort by anybody other than the, you know, two or three militia groups that were there to stop the vote. Even the people that went inside the building, it was not their intention before or during. I don't even think they understood exactly. The cops were letting people in. People have been acquitted on charges in recent cases, in recent trials, because there's video of the cops permitting people to walk in. Baked Alaska has a video where the cop goes, hey, as long as you're, Brittany, as long the as you're not breaking oh my anything, God. it's wait, cool wait, that wait, you're here. a minute right uh, now. All right, yeah. That's, wait, on, that's on video. Oh, thank you. God. All right, Jesus. What do we want to resend around? Do we want to? Do we want to? He's gonna keep going. He's gonna keep going. He's he's terrified of letting us speak. All right, all right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I speak. think that me and Rose have come to an agreement that we should, if we want to move on to the next part, because obviously um, you admit these two speak. aren't going to be able to speak for two years until their criminal case are over. I guess um, we should we can focus on the election fraud We're part. If you want. About I agree. So, Let's the, go the election idea fraud. That me and Rose are scared about the election fraud is hilarious. That's an even easier point to argue than than this stuff. So um, yeah, what what um, Rose, you can do this if you want, or I can say it. Yeah. yeah, I mean we can start with the fact that oh, you know this thing it deserves more scrutiny. Yeah, and it got more scrutiny. It got more investigation. And it was more heavily scrutinized than any other election in U.S. history. When you talk about how, oh, you know, there's so many mail-in ballots. How crazy is this? I guess, you know, this is some, you know, perhaps wink, wink, nudge, nudge proof that the election is stolen. Like, the election occurred during a pandemic. Of course, more people are not going to want to go out and go fucking in mail-in voting. They're going to send it, uh, sorry, in-person voting. They're going to want to mail-in vote instead. 
Um, furthermore, like when it comes to the things that you're talking about, about Arizona, for instance, uh, I would like to, for you to talk a little bit more about that because the Arizona audit pretty conclusively uh, like concluded that there was no uh, truth or to the claims that, you know, Trump was correct about Arizona or the things that were going on there. The people that presented it said this, the uh, Arizona senators and officials there stated the same thing. So I don't know what conclusions you're getting from this Arizona report that somehow, you know, they were correct in saying that the election was stolen. That doesn't seem true in any way, shape or form, whatever. So I've given you a few things there. I guess you can go work with those. I just, I just want to say something real quick. I'll let Nick respond. It, it, it's very ironic that you guys, you know, you say this is the craziest election and all these mail-in ballots. Like Nick said, yes, then that deserves even more scrutiny, okay? And then also you're going to come up here and say, wow, this is such a conspiracy theory that you wanted a, you know, fair election. Yet you guys, you liberals, wouldn't shut the fuck up about Hillary actually won and Trump didn't win, you know, Russia, Russia, Russia for four fucking years. So don't give me this shit. Okay. <laughs> Who are you talking to? You're literally talking to nobody, yeah. dog. I'm talking All right. Can I can I jump in here? Right. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So um with regards to the uh scrutiny, and oh, this was the most scrutinized election in history. Why was it then that no states from November 3rd until January 20th had an independent ballot audit? How long does it normally take for states to have independent ballot audits? They could have had them right there. Why, why did that's not the question. That wasn't the question. That's what it it why, why, is, why does that matter? Because if it normally matter? takes a few weeks for these commissions to get together, then it seems like nothing is It takes a few weeks. Okay. How, how much time was there between November 3rd and January 20th? More than a few I, I don't, weeks probably, I, right? So, the, so you don't have the proper information to ask this question. So I'll ask you one more time. <laughs> how oh my long gosh. does it normally take? This is an unbelievable how level of obfuscation. It, here, how long wait, does it take wait. to settle the Bush so election? He said, you don't, you don't, so you don't he have said, an answer for me. So he said, oh, I think it's you that doesn't have the answer. He said that there was more scrutiny than ever before. Uh, no, there wasn't. And you could say, oh, well, that's because scrutiny takes time. Okay, well, then you're conceding then that there wasn't adequate scrutiny. That doesn't yeah. logically follow. No, I, I, I never, that doesn't even, that's the biggest nonsense I've heard in my life. So you're asking me, why did it take so long for the, no, for the no, that's not what I said at all. Okay, wait, he what said, did you say? Say it one more time. Said, one time. I'll, I'll spell, I'll try not to ramble. He said, simply put, this was a scrutinized election. I said, really? Then why wasn't there an independent ballot audit, not one, between November and January when, when the election was being fulfilled, essentially? You know, when, when the process was put in motion for the so called transfer of power, you know, sure. whatever. And then, my, yeah, sure. the and votes, then my question the to you, my question to you and is, you said, how oh, but wouldn't that take long? It doesn't no, matter. That wasn't his question. No, that matter. wasn't my question. Let me the, restate the point it. Point is, we're gonna, the screen wasn't there. I have to, I have to, okay, I'm going to so very specifically ask you this question, okay? How long does it normally take to scrutinize an election? How long does it normally... Do you have any other election where it was done two days? Yeah, later, 2000. That where all, so all of that was settled in a matter of a few weeks? Yes. So, yes, so they, they, so just be, so they had gone. independent We're audits close. within a few weeks of the 2000 election. I thought for Florida, didn't they recount? Wait, hold on. Say, oh, they didn't. Oh, yeah. Sorry, God. What did we say, Nick? Are you saying that there were independent audits within a few weeks of the 2000 election? No, I'm saying that in 2000. Okay, so then the question was, a different question. When the, okay, you know, you could throw your hands up, but the question was, you know, when was there any other election that was scrutinized in the amount of time? Wrong. The no, that wasn't the question. <laughs> that I want. I want to refocus. Are we in a debate, time. or what? What are we doing here, exactly? What are we doing? Are we just going on? You know, I don't understand what the goal is here. Yeah, okay, I don't so understand very what the goal specifically, is. Nick, on, your wait. challenge. Nick's challenge was, why did it take so many months to get into That's not, audit? that's not, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. Okay, so I didn't that, say that at all. That. You what said, you how say? long does it take, Destiny? I said, yeah, that's coming from you. I said, why were there no independent ballot audits? If, if there's... What? Well, no, no, there were, though. If you say there's scrutiny... No, you said within a few weeks. What, what does scrutiny look like? Well, it wait, looks there like there were, audits. there were independent ballot audits. Were there not? No, there was not. Not till after. There was not one. Until... Until it happened, it happened in the summer of 2021. So there were, there were independent ballot ups. So, the independent so then, my question: We're doing the same thing, but that, that happened after, after the inauguration. That's fine. Right. We're I'm talking asking, about the steal. I'm asking you: When have has any other election had independent ballot audits? And you pointed to the year. There's never been another election where there's 40 percent oh. mail-in ballot. Well, then it's not a mutual. Okay, thank you. I wish you would have just said. <laughs> Oh my God. So you're asking me. You guys so are retarded. Me, so you're asking me, Nick. You guys you're are saying, absolutely you're retarded. You're saying, you're saying <laughs> by your own admission, you're saying, why Where was the scrutiny? Destiny. Wait, 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 wait. Where was the scrutiny? Okay. 
Destiny, go, then Nick, and you guys. Yeah, go. so now, so now let's reformat your question a little bit more recently. What you're, asking <laughs> for is... you're rambling, bro. You're <laughs> rambling. You done? Just okay, so what simple. you're asking for, I understand. Just say it simply. You're rambling. You're scared to let me talk. Nick, all right, all right. You're rambling too much. I know you're scared. I know you're rambling. You're rambling. I know you'd, I know you'd much rather play. Right, right, right. let, let, let Destiny just go and then. And then. Yeah, it's all right. Listen, just sing happy birthday in your head. Pretend you're in another party. You'll be okay, right? So, okay. So, the question more specifically. The question more specifically. Well, depending on how you. No, I'm Okay. The question more specifically that you're asking is Destiny. Why did it take so long for an unprecedented level of independent that's verification that's to, happen said. to the ballots? And to that, Nick, I have to say, wow. I'm not really sure. I'm not really. I'll, I'll Unbelievable. I, I know that you're afraid. You do that. You interrupt people when you're afraid of them. Yeah, you know my point. No, no, you could go ahead. You can finish. Okay, cool. I'm going to repeat it again because he won't let me finish. Yeah, you're going to ramble. Right, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not rambling. I'm actually very to the you're point. You're repeating um, yourself. That's I, I rambling. Can give you, I can give you. Let me just get to it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Just so finish your actual. I know you're triggered, Nick. It's okay. So your actual question was, why wasn't there an unprecedented amount of independent scrutiny of the elections sooner than what actually happened? And to that, I would respond, I don't know. I don't know how long it normally takes to set up those independent commissions. Now, when you point to the year 2000, those recounts were done by the state of Florida. I don't believe there were any independent commissions set up to look at the Florida recounts. So I don't know why you would bring that up as an example when you're really asking about an unprecedented event. By your own admission, all the mail-in ballots were unprecedented. So I don't know if you're trying to prove anything there, but yeah, that's my response. Okay. So l let me say this again, because I like it's honestly disturbing. It's like you're not hearing me, or maybe you just don't speak English today, but Rose said, well, uh, the election was scrutinized. And I said, really? Because there wasn't an independent ballot audit. And then you go, oh, uh, Nick is saying that. Wait, hold on. Are you saying there wasn't enough. one at all? Or are you I'm changing saying. your hold statement? On. Hold on, Rose. Wait, just let. let yeah. Let what, so not. Oh, yeah. No, you're afraid of what I'm saying. So if you say the election was scrutinized. But there weren't ballot audits when the election was contested between November. It's not about how soon. It's about wh when and where the scrutiny was applied. There was no scrutiny during that time. There, were, there, there was, was a recount, there were but several. that's not even what we were asking for was, in 2020. We were asking for an independent though. ballot audit, which didn't occur. An independent ballot audit is not the only type of scrutiny there can be. So, for instance, one of the statements that Barr made— Barr, Attorney General Barr, one of the statements that he made was um, that they had actually gotten some of the machines that you guys accused of being rigged. The FBI themselves had torn one of these machines I didn't machines accuse the machines of being rigged. That's great, you didn't, but when you're trying to say that, well, where's the scrutiny? Where was the independent audit? That's not the only type of scrutiny there can be. There could be tons of other types of scrutiny. One of those was Barr making a statement on behalf of the FBI saying that, like, oh, yeah, we'd actually gotten some of these machines. We torn them apart. We don't see any evidence of malfeasance because one of your guys' claims was that, well, the machines were miscounting votes. One of the machines, right? There's many different types of scrutiny, independent ballot audit audits are only one type of scrutiny. States auditing their own system is another type of scrutiny. Um, you know, different uh, electoral things that are put into to whether you're talking about voter ID or whatever can also be other types of scrutiny. Um, yeah, purging the voter okay, rules can be another you, type of scrutiny. Yeah. Do you know the difference between a recount and an audit? Um, not offhand. I think a recount is when you just go through and you check your own tallies and an audit is when you start matching, verifying signatures or whatever. It probably varies based on place to place. Yes. So... Mm -hmm. So you say, well, but there's lots of different kinds of scrutiny. If we're claiming that the mail-in ballots are the source of the fraud, it requires an audit. Not a no, it doesn't. You can say, it oh, doesn't but, they, but they took apart the machines. Okay, but that, that an has, that's no, a non sequitur. That has nothing to do with the claims of fraud. There was 43% mail-in ballots. That That is, and yeah, Sidney Powell might have said some goofy stuff, and Lynn Wood said some goofy stuff. I've never claimed anything about the machines were hacked by China. That's ridiculous. The source of the fraud, you could go back to June 2020, and Trump said the, when, when they changed the rules because of the pandemic, he said the source of the fraud would be the mail-in ballots. I even said in October before the election, I said on Infowars, there'll be a red mirage, they'll count all the votes from election day, and then in the weeks ahead, they'll count the mail-in ballots, and that'll be the source of the fraud, and that'll be the problem. And you know, the only type of scrutiny that, that would investigate that would be an audit, because only in an audit do you have the signature checks, do you check for duplicates, only in an audit do you have sufficient scrutiny. Recounts are not going to find the fraud from mail-in ballots. Taking apart the machines has nothing to do with anything. So you could say, yeah, well, there was lots of scrutiny. Well, if, if, you're, if you're trying to dismiss claims of fraud by saying, well, we looked at it, the, the things the that you're talking about, they, they weren't discerning the kind of fraud that we're even discussing sure, yet. So that doesn't work at all. So, so then the question is, for all of the independent commissions that happened afterwards, why didn't they find any fraud? Why didn't they? There find was one independent ballot audit, and it found 100,000 discrepancies. What, is it, what do you mean when you say discrepancies? Yes. Yeah, what is a discrepancy? 
in, for 74,000 mail-in ballots, they were not able to see that those ballots were even sent out to people. In other words, for 74,000 people, there was no paper trail that those votes were, that those ballots were even sent, that those absentee ballots were even sent to people for them to then deliver them in boxes. And then there were 14,000 votes where the people were taken off the voter rolls after the election, meaning that they shouldn't have been voting in the 2020 election. And then there were, then there were, uh, you know, 2,000 here and there about other kinds of things, dead people and this and that. Um, but the main thing is 74,000 where there's no, there's no paper trail for the ballots. And there's 14,000 where the people are taken off the voter rolls. And then I think you had like, you know, there, there were a little bit more. But point being is the margin was 10,000. And you're having, you know, whether it's 74,000, 14,000, the remaining 10 or whatever, uh, you know, that are unaccounted for where there's questions. And the point is not to say, oh, well, those were all fake votes for Biden. It's not to say that. It's to say that there's a question about their legitimacy. And if you don't know about 100,000 ballots and the margin was 10, you know, you can't say that that was a fair contest. That's the claim. And there was that was the only independent ballot audit that even occurred after through the entire process. Okay, so just in response to this, so this you're talking about the cyber ninja audit that happened with Arizona, right? So those yeah. that so the claim was that they had received seventy four thousand mail in ballots that they couldn't trace or whatever. But the issue was that the way that they got that seventy four thousand number was they were looking at early voting. But the issue is that you don't have to early vote only by mail. You can early vote in person at vote centers. All of these are considered early votes. In July of twenty twenty one, Maricopa County literally responded to this exact claim and explained the discrepancy for where these seven. 24,000 mystery votes were. It was for people just going to an early voting center and vote. You don't have to mail out a ballot for that. Furthermore, 23,000 of those extra, Trump called those phantom voters, which essentially means that the address of the votes no longer reflects or there is nobody living in that house at the moment when the audit was done. And that's simply the case when people are, for example, moving or when they're voting from abroad, they're using a mail-in vote and there's nobody living in the house at the moment. This is normal in every election that there are like things like this going on as well. And Trump calls them phantom votes, but really like they're just like frictional votes that happens when people move houses. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. The new you problem. guys probably didn't even know about the Cyber Ninja audit until you just Googled it right now. The problem is that these ballots... The, I, I don't know. Did you say something? The problem is that these ballots represent major discrepancies in the election. You could go in there and say, oh, well, that's probably just this. Well, maybe it's just something else. Well, maybe it's just that. When you've got a margin of 10,000 and you've got close to 100, more than 100,000 ballots where there's questions about the paper trail, where there's questions about the address, where there's questions about should they be on the voter roll, did the voter die? That's not good enough. And to say you go from, well, it was already scrutinized to, oh, it was this one time. Well, uh, the, those votes are probably fine. Those discrepancies are probably something else. It's not good enough. And so if that was going on in Arizona, then you have to wonder what was going on then in Georgia and Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. And until we get independent ballot audits, that's the problem is we really don't know. And so I started the debate by saying, you know, it's not to say that we have evidence that, there, you know, here's all these time running right that were fake. It's that there were what? He's, he's, he's the timer running because you're like, you're rambling again. Yeah. About the time. Yeah. yeah. See, when I make a point that, oh, then it's rambling. You're, yeah. you're, you're recentering the, the point point is, yeah. the point is that when there's discrepancies, we, we don't know. And that's a problem when you're using those votes as the basis for picking the next president. That's an issue. You know, what's gotcha. the, what's so, the standard? Gonna, wait, wait, hold on. If, yeah, I want to do this until Brittany stops us. If you're going to repeat yourself, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat myself. So Maricopa County literally tweeted out on their official account, claim, Maricopa County received 74,000 more mail-in ballots than we sent. Facts. In Maricopa County, we allow people to vote early in two ways. One is by mail and two, in person at vote centers. These are all considered early votes. The people who vote in person use ballots provided at a vote center. This is not a new practice, so it's not unusual that we would have more early votes than mail-in ballots sent. In addition, the EV32 returns and the EV33 files are not the proper files to refer to for a complete accumulating of all early ballots sent and received. So Cyber Ninja, that little cute firm, did not demonstrate that there was an issue here just because they received more mail-in ballots than were sent out because they didn't receive more mail-in ballots that were sent out. They received more early votes than mail-in ballots were sent out, which is to be expected in a county that allows you to show up early and vote at a vote center. 
That's not true. That's not true. And and there no, they're just lying. Like you said, they're just yeah. lying. This account is just lying about their election. They're not. It's not that they're lying. It's that they don't know what they're talking about. It's that the they, election. It's not their actual. Li- they're, 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 no, they're making assumptions about these discrepancies, which is the problem. Any okay, time that you have these discrepancies, they come up with the issue of election choice is lying. Let me interrupt for a minute. It's going to start over. So, all right, Nick. I, there's no response. If he's just going to say there's a lie, like then I, well, I can't win any of this. It's not, no, no, no. It's, it's not saying there's a lie. It's not saying there's a lie. It's saying that they're trying to protect their credibility. They don't know about these 74,000 ballots. They're saying, oh, well, uh, we received more ballots than we sent out. Uh, they were early votes. They don't know that. They didn't conduct the audit. And when they say, oh, well, this is not a new practice or something, they're making assumptions about where these ballots are coming from. And that's the problem is we can't just hand wave it away and say, um, well, well, we think these ballots were just early ballots or something. They're protecting their credibility, of course. So no, they're but not the hand waving. That this firm Hold on, now his minutes. Ten minutes to start it over now. <laughs> that's <laughs> why you have to do an independent ballot audit because, of course, the county. You know what we're claiming about the fraud is that, of course, the county election officials are complicit in it. That's what a fraud would look like. So you can't have the, the the county say, we investigated our own election and we found there were no problems. That's why you bring in an independent firm. And you could call that cute, but it's an independent firm. And they come in and say, hmm, there's all these big discrepancies. And they say, oh, well, uh, the probably those, well, we just got those as early votes or something. It doesn't work. So yeah, of course, you're going to trust the independent firm over the county. The county conducted the election. They investigated themselves and found there was no fraud. Oh, that's cute. That's convenient. But but you're claiming you, you you yourself are acknowledging that that ninja firm they didn't find any like auditing problems either they just found that there were more early early votes than mail in ballots that were sent out that's all that you're saying that you have no evidence of anything literally right like uh, uh, they, on the contrary there's evidence of close to a hundred thousand discrepancies in the votes no no there's hold on so your evidence those hundred thousand discrepancies are that more early votes happened than mail in ballots were sent out. That's not evidence of anything, though, because all early votes, including early votes in person, are counted as an early vote. So you have you don't know that you're getting that. Fr- that's that's how the I'm county getting is that explaining. information from Maricopa County that runs from their the election. county yes, that from runs the county. their elections. Yes, that runs their elections. They brought in an independent. Did you not hear what I just said? Yes, the county I'm, investigated their own discrepancies and you're found saying, that they weren't discrepancies you're at all. You're saying that an independent person came in and said there were discrepancies. When you say that, it sounds like you're saying, oh, well, did they match signatures? Was there something wrong? No, they looked at two pieces of paper and said, how did you guys have more early votes than mail-in ballots were sent out? And, I, and the Maricopa County has answered, and you don't have a response for that answer. I do. I just answered it. I just answered it. You're taking the word of the county over the independent investigation, which found that there were close to 100,000 discrepancies. What are the problem? 100,000 discrepancies. What does that mean, Nick? The 74,000 ballots that were sent in by mail that weren't sent out they initially. They weren't sent in by mail. That's in. wrong. You're, You're using the county source saying, oh, well, we have a perfect explanation for that. Uh, they were just not mail-in ballots at all. They were early votes. You bring in an independent commission because the county cannot investigate its own election. That's the, the problem. The independent commission Hello? didn't find that these were mailed-in votes. They didn't. They did. That's not a finding of theirs. They just said you had more early votes than mail-in ballots that were sent. They out. did. They did. They said that there were seventy-four thousand like that, and then they said there were fourteen thousand where people were taken off the voter rolls. And you come in here and say, "Oh well," but the county, the county came in and explained that away. The county cannot investigate. Yeah. Let, let me ask you. I, I mean, like, like, if you think that, like they're literally just lying th- about Can, their well. Election. Well, yeah. let's let's ask it like this. Do you think that? If the county is accused of voter fraud, can the county investigate itself and clear itself of wrongdoing? Does that even make sense? Been to you? Accused of voter fraud, the county had a claim levied against them from a company that didn't understand how they counted their votes. Oh, That's the issue. oh, I see. Ninja, the Cyber, independent okay, investigator did just didn't Ninja, understand. Where did, uh, yeah, where did Cyber Ninja allege fraud? Can you explain that to me? The, we've been over this, dude. You said well, you don't fraud. want to repeat. We've been over no, no, this. Yeah. Tell me what is the 74,000 discrepancies in the ballots that were sent in and 14,000 from the people who were taken off the voter Nick, rolls. What, but, but the you're fraud? getting away Nick, from the, the point fraud? that you no, seem no, to trust the county over the independent on investigation. I'm not trusting the county. The county is mm. explaining that their discrepancies oh. are explained. And now I'm asking you, oh, you're saying, okay. they have fraud. what is the fraud? Well, the, the, the police, didn't understand the what police really indicted voted. me for a crime, but I investigated myself and I found out that I didn't commit the crime at all, actually. Do you that know, Nick, do you have any sense. idea what yeah, like the normal you. numbers on these like voting from prior addresses no, or what normal discrepancies guys. look like in an average election? Well, yes or no? This, Wait, yes or no? Hold on, I need an answer to that question. Yes let or no? Let me ask you this. Wait, if I need an answer. I asked first, 000, okay? There's an order. I'm like, asking the question. No, I asked first. 10, what is this? <laughs> oh, my. He's scared to answer. He doesn't know. 
if the margin is 10,000, then how are you okay with 100,000 discrepancies? So well, I'm going to yeah, re-ask my question. Do you have any idea what the normal amount of discrepancies for elections are of the discrepancies defined as you define them? Do you have if any idea? 10 times more. You're not answering my question. Difference. Brittany, can you make because, him answer that question? Because you're trying to derail this because it's obvious. You're trying to derail this because it's obvious. Brittany, can you 10, make him answer that question? Separate the winner I can't from the loser. Are you kidding me? I can't and there's 100,000 discrepancies. <laughs> That's too many discrepancies, obviously. How do, wait, you say it's, obviously, but you have nothing to compare to. You have no framework. more than the margin of difference. You, you For something to be obvious, for something to be clearly wrong, you need like a, a framework to understand that something is obviously wrong. So I'm yeah. asking you a simple question. Do you have a basic basic framework. Do you know the what the average amount is? There's 10 times more discrepancies than there were You're not answering my between question, Trump and Biden. Right, here, the, this, this is classic. It's just like it's, it is classic. Wait, so it's here's just like before, we don't, we don't you know, trust, there's 50 people indicted for conspiracy. Uh -huh. So you go, well, what about your ramble? Speech? This is a ramble. This is a ramble. There's, so there's we 10 don't trust, times more discrepancies and difference. You go, well, uh, what was it like in another election? I don't know. What's the tallest tree in California? It's a non sequitur. So Maricopa County, we don't trust them to talk about their election results. Can you talk to us, we brought in an independent. What, yes, we did. You, Talk about you what bring in an independent, independent firm to investigate. What is the them? independent firm? Cyber Ninjas. What are they? Who are they? What do they do? Do they even still exist? See, th this is this is the whole. This is that's the actually true. Approach. Cyber Ninjas yeah, haven't done a approach. single independent audit, audit before they did this one. They have no experience with them. Talk about. Trust, wait, hold I on. Just You're telling me we can't trust Maricopa County. The level of like cognitive dissonance here. If I can't trust Maricopa County, that's fine, Nick. I believe you. I can't trust them. So tell me about Cyber Ninja. Why should we trust them? Who are they? They were brought in by the Arizona State Senate to conduct the independent ballot audit. And they went over every they? single they ballot. In Hold on. I'm asking, you, do you have an answer for me? Who, what are the, what, what this, are the, this is, this is what you do. You appeal then to the complexity. You appeal then to complexity to dodge the broader. We just argued the whole time about, oh, there were 100,000 discrepancies. Oh, well, mm, I don't even know what Cyber Ninja is now. I don't even know what Cyber, could you name who works at Cyber Ninja? Can you tell me the employees that work? Can you tell me who runs Maricopa County? So here's a question. I'm wait, wait, wait. Can you tell me who runs Maricopa County because you trust them? No, I trust the county. I don't need to know who's you, there. Well, right? oh, well, who runs it? What is Maricopa County? What kind of gov? Who runs Maricopa it's County? It's something that's probably been empowered by the state in who, order to run the election. It? Wait, what, hold on. The, wait, simple question. Simple question. Know, Nick, Nick, the Nick. Of the state wait. legislature? Wait, wait, no, no, wait. This is really important. <laughs> okay. Is really, so the question so is. So you trust Maricopa. You don't even know who runs it. Wait, hold on. Here's the question. Destiny. Can I ask more? Let Destiny go. Let Destiny ask. So the question is let's say hypothetically it was the case that Cyber Ninjas has zero experience auditing any election. Elections ever. Do you think that maybe I would trust Maricopa County a little bit more than a random cybersecurity firm that's never done this ever in the existence of the company when it did exist? You're hand waving away a hundred thousand discrepancies. Question. It's okay. Fuck me, dude. Wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I, have, I have a question, Nick. 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 Also, I Nick. also do. I just want to make a comment in the rosy. I like that the state that we can't trust to audit their own elections. We can trust them to bring in an independent person to verify the elections. But go ahead, sure. Rosie. Okay, Nick. Simple question. Uh, Nick, do you own a car? Yeah. What brand is that car? Uh, it's a Ford. Do you know that your car is going to explode when you like turn on the ignition? Yeah, I do. Who owns Ford as a company? Who supervised uh, the creation Henry of Ford. your car? Henry Ford. He he owns the company current day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Excellent. Great engagement with my question. Yeah, Thank Bill you Nick, for explaining you why your logic See, makes this, no this fucking is the problem sense. With you. This is, you people aren't even Absolutely interested based. in the truth. Yeah. You people aren't even interested in the fundamentals. Yeah, well, well, and that's the problem. The whole broad thing, a conspiracy theory. Clearly, there was, you know, this independent audit. There was all this energy put towards, you know, trying to figure out the actual results of the vote. So, which is it? You know, clearly, it's not a conspiracy theory. I mean, Cyber Ninja didn't even find fraud. They just have this. Well, the county's putting in hundreds of thousands of dollars towards. Wait, you hold know, on. Truth here, so clearly not a conspiracy. Theory. Destiny, you're underselling the findings of the Cyber Ninjas dramatically. Okay, they actually found at the end of the day when they tallied the votes yeah. that there were an additional 99 votes for Biden and 261 fewer votes for Trump. So you're underselling them there a bit with what okay, they actually found in the report. Oh, it's so the this, same thing that they did with the recap. Make sure we got them. <laughs> But the point stands that if you find significant evidence of discrepancies and a mm -hmm. source of discrepancies, then you have to throw out the electoral context. Absolutely. It all has to be passed. Absolutely. Yeah. And every single state, every, of course, yeah. I mean, the thing is, no, at the no, end of the, the day, state, 
in the state where an independent commission is brought in and they found 10 times more discrepancies Hold on. than there were Independent commission, it was an independent private cybersecurity firm with no background or history in ever doing election research ever, so just to be clear. but uh, Yeah, it, it, yeah, that does raise pretty serious questions about the integrity of the election. <laughs> it raises some laugh, serious questions. Laugh, I don't know if it's about the integrity of the election. But people that are all about our sacred democracy, but when it comes to this stuff, you go, oh, good enough. Mm. Uh, all these discrepancies, all these mail-in ballots. Oh, well, the uh -huh. firm wasn't legit. Mm, well, the county investigated themselves. The problem is you guys don't even care. It's all just about, uh, mm, well, but, but who runs Cyber Ninja? You're not even concerned. You're not even the slightest bit concerned about the fact that there's very legitimate questions and legitimate, no legitimate, question. and legitimate source of scrutiny here we already about whether or not the ballots so, yeah. that were sent so, in by yeah, mail so are legit. So you have a private firm with no background in election monitoring ever that literally was kept afloat by millions of dollars of donations from pro-Trump groups. And even this independent firm never found any fraud. The best that they could do was misread a piece of paper and say there's a whole bunch of discrepancies. They met, how do you America, know they misread but, it? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. What was the fraud they found, Nick? How do you know that they, wait, can, can you, you tell me what they misread it? What did they misread? They, what did they, misread? they misread the forms for reporting the difference between early votes oh, and they just ballot. misread it. Oh, yeah, exactly. that's convenient. Which makes sense for like a that's defunct convenient. cybersecurity firm. They found 74,000 discrepancies and the county comes out and yeah, says, we've explained oh, that. hi, sweetie, yeah, explained you just misread that. the form. Yeah, and oh. that's great. And you know mm -hmm. what? I would expect it from a firm that's pretty incompetent, that's just getting a ton of money from pro places that, you know, are basically just there trying to see. And then also at the end of all their they misread it. <laughs> there was no fraud. Where's the fraud, Nick? So let's wait. Wait. wait let's can you tell me where this. the fraud is? Let's, let's say wait. discrepancy. Can you I know you're getting is? nervous, right? I know you're getting nervous, but let's. Yeah, we're we'll the nervous ones this. in this debate. Yeah, we're very. You nervous. are. Because yeah. first, exactly. first you said, "Oh, we're uh, going to do the thing where we ramble about a bunch of." I don't have a timer, right? but no, I have no. We, we, we need to. Okay, we need to track. Ahead, we need ahead, to track Brett. how the goalposts has shifted over the course of this conversation. So first, you said, "Oh, uh, there was already perfect scrutiny," and it's like, really, where was it? Uh, well, there's lots of scrutiny. Okay, what about independent ballot? Mm, well, uh, those discrepancies were explained by the county. Oh, really? The county investigated itself. Well, the firm is just new, and they just misread it or something. Nick so you go from. There was scrutiny applied to, oh, okay, well, maybe not that kind, but other kinds. Okay, the other kinds aren't legit. Well, that kind, mm, well, maybe they just misread it to, oh, well, the firm is just new anyway. Do you see how over the course of the conversation it has shifted from, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, to I Googled what you just said, to hmm, I read something in an article and I half understand it, to, well, you don't know who runs Cyber Ninja anyway. Cyber Ninja's the, official the ballot is, count is, leaned so more towards in, Biden than the counties did. The bottom line is we were out there during stop the steal because there are legitimate questions about <laughs> your at Arizona. The election. You come back I mean, it's part of every state capital, like, right? Hold That's hold what he said in this quote. Wait, okay. So Nick has like, you have like 15 more seconds to just um, wrap up what you're saying. Then, um, well, I can't, I can't wrap up. They're going to interrupt. So, I mean, I made oh, my point. Sure. The point is, the point is okay. from start to finish, there's not, there's not even a consistent theme here. I mean, they don't even know what they're talking about. They're Googling things in the middle of the debate. Literally. Well, there was scrutiny. Uh, well, I just Googled Cyber Ninja and I just found something out. It's like, you're not prepared. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't even care about the truth. What's the one soft? thing? Let's, let's, go, wait, 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 let's go from start to finish. So first of all, you saying that you were able to Google and disprove my claim in five seconds is a slight against your argument, True. not ours. I'm saying that number one. You, no, but you didn't disprove number it. Two, we number didn't disprove two. It. Excuse me, uh, Brittany. I'm, start, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm started your timer over. Relax. Thank you. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> chill out, King. Getting so Again, out. we start. So let's start from, from start to finish. The original claim was, um, why wasn't there any scrutiny? And it's like, well, what do you mean? There was lots of scrutiny. Well, when I say scrutiny, I mean, why weren't there independent uh, investigations on the ballots? Like, when has that ever happened before? Well, it happened in 2000. No, it didn't. That was Florida. And they did that. it themselves. Oh, okay. Well, okay, fine. So then the re-question is, was this ever happening ever in U.S. history that we have independent? Well, no, but like it's happening now. Okay, well, what did they find now? Well, they found that there was huge evidence of voter fraud. What was that evidence of voter fraud? Didn't okay, say that they either. never ever said fraud a single time. Over. <laughs> what they said was there were discrepancies. Okay, what kind of discrepancies? Well, when we look into it, the discrepancies they said was, well, there were 74,000 more mail-in ballots received than what were sent out. Oh, that's actually, that's a good point, Nick. Oh, but hold on. Maricopa County says that they read the wrong forms and that the ballots that were sent out are added to the early ballots that are voted on in person, and that's what that, that early vote number comes from. That the cybersecurity firm that was hired 
to investigate this misunderstood where early votes come from. And now, now I'm being told that I'm supposed to accept that that cybersecurity firm with no past history whatsoever in election investigation that is now defunct, that they themselves said no voter fraud existed, that was kept afloat by millions of dollars of pro-Trump investigations, that this firm saying, well, there were discrepancies that Maricopa County has already accounted for is supposed to make me think there was election fraud. That's what we've gone from start to finish. And it's laughable that you think you've made a case for and anything. it's weighted against kind of road risk. all of the lawsuits, the case after case, the, you know, the William Barr, which is Trump's own appointee, those cases which were done in courts where the, the judges were appointed by Trump himself, the FBI, the DOJ, the DHS, and all of this is what we have on my on, on our side over here in this debate. So it's not just that, oh, we are debating the intricacies of the cybersecurity thing and there's nothing else supporting our side. We have all this evidence, this huge tower of things over our side, and we're debating about whether or not this tiny little fucking thing on your side even exists in the first place. We, we That's proved, the overall wow, positioning of friends. Nice Do I get another minute? Do I get another minute? Yeah, yeah, I'm, starting like it over. I'm starting it over. Go well, ahead. Okay. Your oh. initial claim. Wait, 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 Hold on. What is it? I have another minute. No, I didn't fit. You guys interrupted me before I finished. Oh, you finished. Come on, what is this? Are you kidding me? Bernie, killing us. Are you going to do it or not? Rose, were you done? No, um, he wasn't. Not, yeah, no, I'm not oh, done at all. Um, so we, yeah, I'm rambling this debate. Uh, do I get another minute now? Do they stack now, Brittany, or do we just restart everything? You're starting your minute. Go. Another minute? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> now I got a third minute. You guys interrupt. Okay. I'm I'm starting them over. Fucking talk. Listen. Go to you. Okay, your, I got initial, over. your initial fucking thing. Wait, what just so happened? hold on. So we, we and we still so haven't overcome. We still haven't overcome the fact that despite everything that Nick is saying, he has been unable to answer. He's making fun of us for not being researched and not knowing our things or whatever. He has been unable to prove a single frame of reference or put anything like that in place with all of his comparisons. It happened before with the, oh, you know, nothing had been done in the first few months with the independent audit. It happened again when it came to the, oh, you know, um, yeah, how much is like the average amount of like discrepancies for counties like this and investigations like this? He was unable to answer. He's just able to take like numbers and things just out of context. And because he has no frame of reference, he's just going to be like appeal to, oh, big number big number here when we're talking about huge things right oh God, we're literally wrong, talking about elections wrong. and they, do i get another minute now wrong. no i'm fine oh. <laughs> i should get another minute to be clear i mean i can keep talking if you really want me to if they want to they seem really interested in the rosarist monologue here so maybe i should give them what they want Listen, your original claim was that the voter fraud was a conspiracy theory you literally said that over and over and over yeah we have we have proven that wrong why would the Arizona government invest hundreds of thousands of dollars into an independent audit if this was a conspiracy theory? But, but of course, moving the goal. I can't post. defeat an argument like that. All right, I'm starting his minute over. Yeah. Give him another minute. I want to hear him talk more. Yeah, keep keep laughing and doing your little cope, little irony thing. You know, you've been proven wrong over and over. I mean, in the beginning, this was about January 6th and how me and Nick are guilty. And then... You know, you lost that one, so you moved it to election fraud. So go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. Wait, yeah. I'm interrupting again. Can I get one more minute, please? Whoa, whoa, minute. it's my turn. It's my yeah, turn. And I get two minutes because you just said that. So, <laughs> go ahead. Um, so it's, I think it's really funny that Rose tries to pivot. He's like, well, uh, we have all this other stuff. We don't need to focus on this. We don't need to focus on this little thing where we got fucking blown the fuck out. Well, let's focus on uh, there's still lots of other things that we didn't talk about yet. The independent ballot audit is so important because you started out, you opened this this conversation up when we finished with 1-6 by saying, well, there's already been a lot of scrutiny, and that wasn't true. You didn't know what you were talking about, and that really gets to the heart of the matter. There was no scrutiny, and then when they appointed the independent commission a year after the fact, what did they find all this all these discrepancies. Then you Google it and you find an article and you say, oh, well, Karen Fan, Karen Fan disputed it. Oh, the county disputed it. Okay, the county is being investigated for the fraud. So, they, I mean, they can answer the independent audit however they want and say, oh, these discrepancies, well, um, people just can't read forms. Obviously, that's not good enough. And you could go and say, oh, well, there's no frame of reference. Here's a frame of reference. There was 10 times more discrepancies than there were votes between Trump and Biden. We don't need to pull the voter records of every election in American history to say that that is sufficient to say that the contest might not be valid. And that's all that you need. You don't need to say 
here's the fraud that proves that Biden won. You need to show that there's sufficient doubt about the integrity of the election that you can't trust the results. And that's been demonstrated 100 percent. You can say, oh, well, the county disputed it. The county was complicit in it. That's why they had to bring in an independent commission, obviously. And the county is not the legislature. You said, oh, well, how can we trust a legislature but not the county? The county and legislature are different things. The legislature brought in an independent company. You're saying, oh, well, but you don't trust the county in disputing it. Yeah, because the county election officials and the legislature are different and you don't even know that so, okay, so let's mean, let's trying let's, to come up with a whole interrupted another minute no 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 there's no way his minute was announced out. there's no oh, way he wasn't out of his minute this is actually going to be um like our final thoughts on this so i'm going to give him another minute and then everybody's going to have two minutes to uh, end this topic and we'll move on to the next so go ahead you got your okay so first thing uh wait no wait wait did nick are you done yeah Okay. okay. All right. Go ahead, Rose. You have two so, minutes. First thing, uh, just I, I just want like a, a simple, a simple yes or no to this question because it's a very simple question. Wait, no, 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 no. We're, we're closing, we're closing. Oh, it's a closing we're statement. Closing okay. So yeah, I would like done. to add that number one, um, Nick Fuentes is saying that the, the county is disputing the findings of the report and the audit. Incorrect. There is not a single direct contradiction or conflict between the independent audit and what the county has said. Merely what the county is doing is the county is explaining. There has been no clash there. It's just that the, the, the investigation, the independent audit said that, okay, well, actually, you know, we ran through it. And when we did our counting, it actually looked like it leaned even more to Biden than, saw, than you know, was initially believed. However, we have a bit of questions about these things here. The county explained that, bang, easy. There was no contradiction. There's no clash. It's not that the county is disputing the audit. It's that the county is explaining the audit. Then when Nick is saying that, oh, you know, there was no independent, like there was no checking at all about any of this. There was no scrutiny at all. 63 lawsuits would disagree with you on that point. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's just the fact that we have all of this, like these piles and piles and piles and piles of evidence of our side. And the entire debate ends up getting like focused on this hyper niche thing from a company that has no history of doing this is like defunct now. And that's all we need apparently to prove that the most secure, and I quote, the most secure in American uh, election in American history is like, uh, yeah, is a fraud. Do I get a second opening because they laugh now or I don't know? <laughs> just finished. Triggered? Triggered by the Yova laugh? Yeah, keep it. Right, well, dude, Vic, uh, Rose got a victim Vic, complex get, over there. Yeah, Bake, you get your two minutes. We, we get another minute? Oh. Okay, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what you're fucking debating anymore. It's like, you know, a uh, uh, good sign of losing is when you keep switching topics over and over. Like, I like from what it started to what we're talking about now is just insane. Like, you literally came out... Uh, you know, talking about how I'm guilty, I went in the Capitol, and Nick saying shit on a megaphone, and now we're talking about cyber ninjas. You know, we're talking about all these intricate details, and I can see you reading DMs and Googling shit the whole time, so you clearly don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but, you know, the facts are Trump won the election. We all know that. January 6th was epic. It was a peaceful protest. We, you know, we don't uh, avow any sort of violence or anything like that, obviously. It was a peaceful protest. And, um, you know, it's just hypocritical because everyone on your side, when they do a protest, you know, Roe v. Wade or whatever it is, oh my gosh, they're stunning and brave, they're heroes, you know, but we have one day, we have one fucking Patriots Day, and you want to shame us for it, you want to make us into domestic terrorists, and you know what I say to that? I can fuck that shit. We are against the corporate overlords that you guys suck off each and every day, and you can play this little charade in front of the internet but people are not buying it. People are not buying it. So that's my statement. There we go. All right, Destiny, two minutes. Uh, we're doing two. Um, <laughs> just <sighs> voter fraud and finding it anywhere. It would have been so much fun to have a real conversation about that. Like uh, Giuliani had his cases. Plenty of states tried to do their cases. Plenty of independent people brought cases. Like most of these were dismissed immediately just because they're, they're some because states had no standing. Texas trying to sue other states like this is how you guys need to run your election. They have no standing to do that. And 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 mostly because of other people just trying to bring like bunk evidence in front of Rep uh, Republican conservative appointed judges. Most of these guys are Trump appointed judges, right? Um, Trump's own DOJ, Trump's own appointees across the FBI, like all these other people are saying um, like, hey. Uh, there was no voter fraud. We can't find it. The machines seem fine. All of the audits seem to be turning in, in, in the same results. All of the states that are recounting all this stuff. Like a, every single time, there is this claim of like, uh, like, well, you know, there was voter fraud. We need to check it out. It's like, okay, well, we need to look at this. Well, we need to match signatures. Well, we need to like check their dick sizes. Like, we need to go into their homes and we need to see. We need a fucking time machine. Like, it's always like moving the goalposts. The reality is, is that you are asserting 
a what would be literally and i'm not hyperbolic here what you are asserting is the grandest election conspiracy in the history of planet earth it would be the if this happened in one county in one single county it would be the biggest election fraud story in the history of the entire planet in one county but you're asserting that this didn't happen just in one county, but in dozens or hundreds or thousands across the entirety of the United States, and there wasn't a single leak. Nobody got caught. Nobody blubbed. Nobody opened their mouth. Nobody caught something on a cell phone. No evidence was found. No evidence was presented in front of any judge. No independent thing was able to find more than discrepancies. Nobody leaked it. Like, dog, if this if the election was stolen this well, fucking the Democrats deserved it because this would be the grandest heist of an election that has literally ever happened. We wouldn't have fucking losers like Dinesh scraping millions of different types of cell phone data to try to find out who walked near an election box to see if we were actually having fraud happening or not. And the idea that we're going to say that some independent firm that was hired in, in Arizona to, to, to do in, like election fraud investigation, that this firm that was paid millions of dollars by pro-Trump people, even they came out and said there was no fraud. They just couldn't read the fucking forms, which isn't surprising. There's a reason why, one, the firm is bankrupt and doesn't exist anymore. And two, the fact that they had no history doing any sort of election work whatsoever. Like, yeah, I'm not going to believe these guys over the actual counties that do the votes and the vote tallies that's okay. it all right um i don't know if you guys want to take like a minute break to go to the bathroom. Whoa, that's true yeah we can take a minute break that's perfect I thought you did it first. all right go ahead go ahead what? Yeah, oh wait yeah. i didn't know i thought i was just arguing was that my closing statement i want one yeah 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 okay, all right, go ahead. one after go ahead. Go ahead. what wait, no, you get no, two no, closing statements no, 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 no this is you getting your second closing statement outrageous Brittany, right, stop the count stop the count investigate this debate investigate the times all right, we're starting. Go ahead. You get okay. Yeah, we need um, to get this thing. I'm starting his dinner over another minute because big laugh. <laughs> yeah. <interrupted me. laughs> no. So, um, so look, it's this simple. We had more mail-in ballots than ever before in history. Those ballots are the most susceptible to fraud, and we're not talking about hundreds of counties. We're talking about four or five. We're talking about five major cities, major counties run by Democrats biggest voter fraud in the history of the planet? Well, okay, how about Stalin? How about Saddam Hussein? The idea that elections are never rigged, the idea that elections and politics is never rigged, that it's never, it's just a level of naivete that, of course, you expect this from liberals. Whenever scrutiny is applied, where it hasn't been much, there have been lawsuits run by Republican grifters, I'll, I'll admit, like uh, Sidney Powell and Linwood. But when you do a proper independent ballot audit, you find discrepancies. And you could take the government's word for it, because that's what it is. And the government can say, oh, well, the private firm that investigated us, they just couldn't read a form. And that you can hand wave away 100,000, 10 times more problems. That's the only time you had one. You'd ask the bigger question, why weren't there more independent ballot audits? If there was that much concern, 80% of Republicans thought the election was rigged. There should have been commensurate scrutiny. There wasn't. When there is, you find discrepancies, and we're supposed to believe the government that they can hand wave this away and say, oh, the firm just didn't know what they were talking about. It requires, you don't need to believe in a conspiracy. You need to have a profound trust in government to believe that any of this is true. You uh, Fundamentally, that's the disagreement, is a profound faith and confidence in the system, which I just don't have, which I never have had. And I think that's the fundamental difference. We could go to imright.com and say, oh, well, the company was young or this and that. But ultimately, it's, you know, is the government going to cheat? I think they're capable of it. And I think they're willing to do it. And they certainly had the motive and the opportunity to do it in 2020. And we never got an investigation. So, there's your fraud. All right. Now, do you guys want to take a minute to go to the bathroom or get a drink or anything before we start the second topic? Or do you just want to jump right in? I'm ready to go. I'm good to jump in. I'm okay. Good. All right. So the second topic is going to be about the Buffalo shooting, which happened about a week ago. And uh, I know that people have been named and blamed and all this stuff. So um, I think, uh, Rose, I'm guessing you probably have a written statement to start off. Yeah, I mean, we are going to have five minute openings again. We'll probably do the same order. So if you want to get started with your opening, well, it, it's um, ten combined between the the teammates, right? All right, fine. And then we'll, we'll just subtract whatever. If I go over, just subtract. Yeah, that that's nice. yeah. Just take yeah. his time. But of course, he contributed to making my opening, so it's like of really nice. Um, right, <clears throat> yeah, last one wasn't fiery enough, so I guess we'll go for this one. So uh, at 2.30 p.m. on the 14th of May 2022, the Buffalo shooter live streamed himself exiting his car in a Topps friendly market store in the Kingsley neighborhood in Eastern Buffalo and began firing at innocent people in the parking lot, killing three. He then proceeded into the store, killing another seven people inside for a total of 10 innocent victims. Upon leaving the store, he was apprehended by police officers and is currently being charged with multiple counts of first degree murder. 
Much like other shootings, this appears to be the newest in line in an array of right-wing extremist acts of violence, driven by conspiracy theories such as the Great Replacement, otherwise referred to as white genocide. The Great Replacement is a conspiracy which claims that white populations are being intentionally replaced by non-white populations. According to the conspiracy, this is accomplished through two means, immigration and the lowering of white birth rates. A vital part of the conspiracy is that it is being orchestrated by a group of transnational elites, most often Jewish people. This conspiracy is most commonly found in dissident right-wing places on the internet, although it is unfortunately seeping into mainstream conservatism more and more. Nick Fuentes is a prominent propagator of all tenets of the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory, or in the words of Nick Fuentes, the Great Replacement Reality. Following the El Paso shooter, a similar act of white supremacist terror, Nick Fuentes had this to say. Why is it that when we are forced to accept probably the most transformative policies in the history of our country, perhaps the most transformative policies that are possible, which is the systematic replacement of the people that constitute that country, we can't talk about it. We can't use mass media. We can't run for office. We can't change policy. So at a certain point, what is the expectation? Well, just like the El Paso shooter, the Buffalo shooter decided to try to do something about it. However, this time, instead of rationalizing the motives of the shooter, Nick Fuentes went for a different approach, calling the Buffalo shooting a new false flag on Telegram. Although he still couldn't quite help himself and later added a new message reading, white genocide is real, regardless of the false flag, essentially, it didn't happen, but if it did, he was right about his motives. Now, you'd think people like Nick Fuentes would have learned to not call mass shootings false flags from what happened to Alex Jones, but regardless, there are two possible interpretations of Nick's statement. Firstly, that the shooting didn't happen at all, which would be quite a bold claim considering that the shooting was literally live-streamed. Or secondly, that the shooter wasn't actually a white supremacist who believed in the Great Replacement. The second interpretation is only marginally less ridiculous than the first. The manifesto that was in all likelihood written by the Buffalo shooter contained numerous references and stated support for white supremacist ideas and a belief in the Great Replacement, with quotes such as, this crisis of mass immigration and sub-replacement fertility is an assault on the European people, that, if not combated, will ultimately result in the complete racial and cultural replacement of the European people, and openly avowing himself to be a neo-Nazi, it leaves little to the imagination. However, even if you believe that the 180-page manifesto containing identifying details, which was published several days before the shooting, was somehow not actually written by the shooter himself, the video contains more than enough proof. Firstly, the N-word was literally written on his firearm, as was much other white supremacist jargon, which was clearly visible from the perspective of his camera. Secondly, there is an instance where he comes across a white cashier hiding behind a register. He points his gun at him, says sorry, and then continues without shooting the cashier, an act of mercy which was not afforded to his black victims. There is of course much more evidence for the shooting being motivated by white supremacist beliefs that I'm ready to refer to should need be. Our opposition may try to whataboutism their way out of the core focus on this discussion. I would like to remind my opposition that the relevant aspect to this shooting is that it is politically motivated. Shootings without direct political motivations, while horrible and most certainly deserving of analysis and discussion, are not relevant to this debate in particular. Furthermore, I would like to preempt my opposition's argument that this is retaliation for other acts of terror, with a reminder that right-wing terror greatly outnumbers that of other types in America. In the total number of plots since 1994 and in deaths for the past two decades, in 14 out of the 21 years between 1994 and 2019 in which fatal terror attacks occurred, the majority of deaths resulted from right-wing attacks. In eight of these years, right-wing attackers caused all the fatality, and in three more, including 2018 and 2019, they were responsible for more than 90% of annual fatalities. Furthermore, I would also like to add to my opposition's prescribed solution for the so-called diversity-inspired terror would lead to a great deal of violence, as even Nick Fuentes himself acknowledges, and I quote, Basically, what you're saying is that to end white genocide, to restore traditional white society, that would bring with it inertia, and the excesses of that would be real xenophobia, real hostility towards perceived or real outsiders, that if we had the restoration of a core American identity centered around ethnicity and race, well, we would tend to regard not whites as outsiders, and there might be some backlash against them. To me, that is almost inevitable, and you're basically right about that. In conclusion, the Buffalo shooting and the 10 innocent black people who died as a result of it, making it the worst mass shooting in the US this year, and the worst in Buffalo history, was motivated, like many others, by neo-Nazi conspiracies. Now, I am not claiming that Nick Fuentes is solely responsible for these events, because he by no means is. However, with statements such as, if you're a white male Zoomer, remember that the people in power hate you and your unborn children, and they will try to genocide you in your lifetime. Is it really a stretch to believe that he has some part in contributing to the forces that radicalize young white men into committing mass shootings? I don't think so. Um, okay. All right. Uh, Bates, you want to go? All right. Yeah. Well, wow. Ooh. <laughs> 
Well, that was a lot there. Um, you know, well, first of all, I'm going to say white genocide is real. Okay. Um, and just because some idiot shot up a grocery store doesn't disprove that that is real. Okay. And, you know, the other thing here is you're saying, oh, this is a neo-Nazi conspiracy theory. Oh, my gosh. You know, using all these scary buzzwords, Rose. And, um, you know, it's funny because I'm actually looking at the UN website right now. Wow. Whoa. What is this? UN.org. Replacement migration. Wow. It's talking about, is this the solution to declining and aging populations? Wow, it's almost like this is something that a lot of people agree on. Wow, it's not some <laughs> neo-Nazi conspiracy theory. But I mean, look, you know, and Nick is going to know this way more than me. I'm not some crazy intellectual. I'm a fucking content creator, goofy guy on uh, the internet. But, you know, look at how the white population in America has drastically gone down. It was about, you know, 90% in, I don't know, I, I, I don't know the year, and then now 80, 70, 60, you know, white people are about to be a minority in a country that they founded. Um, you know, it, it's obvious. It doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist to see that. Um, but, you know, pretty much everything you're saying is disingenuous because, you know, you simp for minorities, and if white people stand up for themselves, you say they're neo-Nazis, you say they're white supremacists and all that. We can't have anything, apparently. European white people can't have anything in the entire world. Um, but like I said, there, there is a war against white people. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is very, very common knowledge. Uh, I mean, even, even a lot of people on the left acknowledge this now. So, um, you know, like I said, some idiot shooting up a grocery store doesn't disprove that. Just like, you know, remember that lady Nassim? She shot up YouTube because they banned her. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't agree with the shooting up YouTube, but that doesn't mean what was happening, you know, YouTube banning people and fucking up their uh, income for no reason. That, that doesn't mean that that's not real. Okay, so that's basically my statement on that, and I'll, uh, you know, give up the rest of the time to Nick. Go ahead, Destiny. Um, also, but wait, before Destiny goes, uh, Nick, your mic is, like, clicking a bit. I have it muted right now. You're able to unmute yourself, but if you want to just maybe keep it muted when you're not talking, because... The clicking was from you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Destiny, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I largely agree with everything Rose first said. He just he said it so eloquently. Um, it's pretty obvious that the shooting was uh, racially and politically motivated. It's pretty obvious that there are a large number of content creators. Um, I would say uh, that have published videos in the year uh, 2018 and onwards that we should be hypercritical of in terms of their contribution to things like the great replacement of white people. And um, yeah, I believe that uh, people like Baked Alaska and Nick Fuentes pretty obviously push these same types of conspiracies. So there is a massive replacement of white people that is being deliberately done by a hyper elite group of people, oftentimes Jewish. And uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Nick, All you right. have like eight minutes if you want. Woohoo! Let me put my headphones in. Shit. They're all tangled. I lost my AirPods, so now I gotta go with these ghetto. Sorry, is that offensive? Is that racist? Sorry, sorry <laughs> lib, libtards. Sorry, <laughs> Libcox. I mean, uh, these are underprivileged headphones. Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me still? Okay. Um, so. Uh, <clears throat> Oh no! Where did he go? He got replaced <laughs> live. What just happened there? He'll be back. Oh no! He'll be back in two hours, guys. Just hold on. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Hello. Hi. Hey, I got kicked. Destiny kicked me. I get ten more minutes for my opening statement. <laughs> so, um, see, we're yeah. being replaced right there. That's right. Yeah. So I don't even really know what this debate is about. If, if it's just like accusing me of like inspiring mass shootings, I'm really not interested in disputing that. Uh, you can watch my show. My show is not a show that encourages violence. It's a Christian show. We're Christian. Everybody who watches my show for the most part is Christian. And I've converted people to Catholicism. We do not support killing. And, you know, not morally. And even as a strategy, it just doesn't even make sense. Uh, the guy was mentally ill. That, that much was obvious. He 
was a COVID alarmist. He was a COVID alarmist. How could you watch my show and be showing up to school in a hazmat suit, which is what he did? He threatened to shoot up his school for other reasons. Um, And ultimately, the reason that people, in my opinion, do these types of things is because right-wing extremism is is, uh, seen as antisocial. I think that's just the ultimate expression of, it's like the ultimate antisocial political sort of idea. So when somebody goes and says, oh, I'm, I'm going to write a manifesto or whatever, I don't see that necessarily as that shows how violent right-wing views necessarily are. I think it just demonstrates the fact that right-wing views are considered antisocial. Extreme, right-wing extremism is antisocial. Um, so, so there's that. I think that is just ridiculous. So that's out of the way. As far as replacement migration is concerned, it's just a fact that it's occurring. We don't even need to get into the weeds about is it deliberate, is it not deliberate, who's doing it. It's a fact that it's happening. Uh, The proportion of whites in America is declining. That's a fact. And the proportion of non-whites is increasing. Um, So whether somebody goes into a mall and shoots or a uh, supermarket, whether somebody goes into a supermarket and shoots people over that, Uh, is really immaterial to the mathematical fact of replacement. And and they call it many things. They call it replacement migration. They call it population refreshment. I've seen it referred to as that. Uh, And it's about the fact that the American birth rate is declining. It's not replacing itself. So they're going to refresh or replace the population with immigrants. The immigrants come from non-white places. This is not, this does not require a great leap this does not even require, uh, you know, ideological conviction. It's a fact. It's acknowledged in the census. It's acknowledged by the left and the right. Um, and it's only when people say that they want to resist it that suddenly then there's this big problem. Well, you know, this is a dramatic thing that's occurring. Uh, the composition of the country is being permanently altered. And, you know, race is real. And so insofar as the race of the country is changing, the country is therefore changing. And there are its proponents and there are its uh, opponents. I don't think that people that oppose this should be vilified and and blamed for uh, antisocial violence by mentally ill people. There are people that shoot up uh, places for left-wing causes. Admittedly, they're they're less numerous, but I don't see how that's even relevant. Uh, well, but your your ideology is, inspires a few more terrorists than our ideology. You know, for the same reason that a guy shoots up a church in Dallas because he's an atheist, or a BLM guy kills cops in Texas because he's a you know a black nationalist, or a black guy shoots people on the subway in New York. You know, and we're going to say, oh well, let's let's tally up all the violence. You know, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. Let's argue about the ideas. The immigration is happening. The fertility rate decline has already transpired. It is what it is. There are people that oppose it. There are legitimate reasons to oppose it. And there are legitimate methods to oppose it that are not violence. And um, it's disingenuous to bring up the El Paso shooting thing because I was arguing against violence. I said that you can blame the elites for this violence because they have left very few avenues of legitimate recourse. It's not a rationalization for violence. It's to say that when you corner people, you can't totally be surprised when they go out and and do horrible things. I don't endorse those things. I don't think it's rational. I don't think it's a rational way to redress those concerns. Um, But when there's a level of censorship and disenfranchisement against people that have these views, Um, You know, these are just things that occur. It's not a judgment call that's rational or irrational. It's just a consequence of uh, sort of the the avenues for redress that have been left. Um, But I've always been against violence, whether it's El Paso or this. You know, I did my whole show about this on Monday, last Monday, and I said, I hate violence. I said prejudicial violence is worse than regular violence, blah, blah, blah. Um, You know, so to attribute the... I, the violence to an idea or people that promulgate an idea, I think is unfair and I think it's disingenuous. The big takeaway is that, uh, you know, whether people act on it or not, it's happening. So that's, uh, so I don't even, I think it would be helpful to clarify what the debate is even about. Because if it's about do you cause violence, I'm just not interested in that. In my opinion, I would actually rather this topic that you're talking about right now, the great replacement, um, I mean, that is kind of what the idea ideology was but i think so I, I think that's something i've been wanting to see for a well, long time hold on hold on no, so the debate so hold on the, well uh, it tends to go into that 
the real question so here like i can give you the whole tree right now or we can just run it down but the question is going to be is do you believe that the great replacement is being done intentionally or do you are you that's a pretty important question um i don't know i think it's a complex question that's why i asking it yeah yeah but i i also don't think it's really why i'll ask you that let me answer your question with a question because I'm, I'm genuinely curious why does that matter because if you think that it's something that's being done intentionally by an elite group of people my next mm -hmm. question is going to be is can you alleviate these concerns or address these concerns through the electoral process and if you believe that a hyper elite group of people can control migration and the electoral process then my next question is going to be if there is an elite group of people controlling something through and they also control the electoral process so you can't get redressed through the electoral process what alternatives are you leaving people beyond violence Seems like you're walking them right there and then asking them. You're not asking them to drink, but that's the only thing they can do, right? I well, I've always advocated for electoral solutions, and I I think there are. I don't. I don't. Well, hold necessarily... on. So, do you think you can vote your way out of the Great Replacement? Is that see? Possible? I don't like. See, I don't like that question because that question is reductive. Well, okay. what you're laughing, but I'm trying to answer in good faith. Um, I, I don't think that. Right? I'm not trying to obfuscate. It's a complex question. How do you achieve uh, dramatic political change? That's a, that's actually a big question for anybody. If you're a communist, you know, Vosh, your buddy, he, uh, I know he's not your buddy. He, he wants everything to be a worker co-op. You know, you could say, you could equally say, how could we achieve worker co-ops if the capitalists control the elections, blah, blah, blah. You know, how do you achieve political change is a difficult question. I don't think anybody votes their way out of anything. I think that it requires uh, activism. I think that it requires uh, media and advocacy it requires a lot more than voting. If you're asking if I think that it could be resolved without violence, the answer is yes. I think that's the the appropriate question is, can you achieve your political goals without violence? And I, I think the answer is yes. Are we going to vote our way out of this is, is I think, reductive and loaded. But, uh, but you already answered this question before, but there you gave a different answer. You said that we can't use mass media, we can't run for office, we can't change policy. So at a certain point, what's the expectation? We're restricted from doing those things. Yeah. We're restricted from accessing mass media, restricted no, okay. from accessing social media. No, no, you can't media. is what you So if you can't do any of those things, what is left? Okay. <laughs> when did I say that? In 2019, August 2019? You said this after, like, during your is stream right? about the El Paso. But, what, so, was the so, date? what was the date on that? August 2019? When the El Paso well, wait, shooting fine. happened. Wait, so, no, no, hold on. Actually, Rose Risk. So Nick is disavowing what he said back then in 2019. I'm not, disavow I'm not disavowing what I said. <laughs> oh, well, then if you don't disavow, then who cares when you said it? You still agree with it, right? Yeah. Are, are we See, this is why I'm just not interested in this debate. Hey, because that's, super, that's super so. You can find quotes that I said in 2018. He said and, I would, I would, and I would say, I said that in 2018. Let's, let's, have a converse, let's have a conversation about the issues. We can get into the semantics of what I said three years ago. No, no, this is directly about material. what we're talking about. This is about. like literally the substance of what we're talking so about. What, so what's the, what's the claim then? Is so, the claim about violence or is it about white genocide? So this is the question. This is The question to you is, okay, if you can't use mass media, if you can't run for office, if you can't can't change policy what else is there to do well we can we can so when wait I so do you agree or do you not agree with your previous on, statements hang on can i can i answer the question you ask the question so when i say on my show we can't use mass media we can't run for office this is obviously rhetorical uh i was saying that on my show on youtube i was saying that i was still on youtube at the time saying it so obviously if i meant we there is zero access to media that wouldn't even make sense in context because i was saying it on youtube when i say we can't use mass media we can't use whatever running for office this is rhetorical. Obviously, I'm saying these things are heavily restricted and very difficult. Do you think the, YouTube is mass media? Do you think your yes. YouTube? So your you think your yes. YouTube channel was mass media? Your YouTube, YouTube channel. YouTube. Do you know how many active users are on YouTube? Huh? Your YouTube. Do you think your your like your media device? Do you think that's mass media? YouTube has two billion active users. If you're on a platform of two billion active users and you have the potential to reach an audience of millions or billions of people, yes, social media is mass media. You might have not have a large following, but obviously the ability to use social media is the ability to promulgate a message to massive amounts of people in the way that you couldn't do through an alternative medium like uh, going on a street corner or handing out a pamphlet. But you're not you're fundamentally not interested in having a conversation or interested in getting hung up on these uh, semantic 
things. Well, this is well, this is said, vital to the You said you can't. Okay. What I meant was it's severely restricted. What I meant was to say it's severely restricted and that what this is causing is desperation. The point I was trying to make is that when these legitimate means of, of redress are restricted, the point was to say it causes desperation. It's not to say that that desperation desperation is a, is an irrational state, and the point is to say that if you're not given if you can't if you're banned on YouTube and you know you, the candidate that you want to run for office can't win because they get censured and all these things happen to them and, and so on because there's these restrictions on that kind of view, people become desperate and desperate people do irrational horrible things and the point is to say. If there wasn't desperation, then maybe there would be less violence, was the point I was trying to illustrate. Um, so I, I have a question about the, because you, if you're well, just going to like, you, you have a response to that. I mean, you're just what? walking back all your quotes from before. So I mean, not, if we're going to do that, then we can just I'm keep walking, it going. I'm not walking. Well, when I said can't, I actually mean that we can, but it's just heavily restricted. And then when I say, what do you expect uh, to happen? Yeah. I'm just meaning well, that people yeah, have this. It's called rhetoric. It's called rhetoric. I'm Jewish and I'm from Sweden and it's called, it's called. Do you have a problem with my appearance, Nick? Do we no, have a problem here? No, I, I, I think you're uh, you're fantastic, but um, but you're being disingenuous, and this is not. I, I don't see how this is conducive to uh, elucidating our views or trying to get to the heart of the matter. Okay, so it's let's like, go back okay, to the well, heart of the matter. Response doesn't even make sense here. For instance, like when you say like it's rhetoric. What, what is that like people aren't convinced by substance they're convinced by rhetoric oh like, my the, gosh. like the shooter wasn't convinced by substance he's convinced by rhetoric of course of course like the shooter say, was like, mentally ill rhetoric. the shooter what does that have to do Ill. with anything it doesn't matter so he's not he's Ill. not convinced by anything the yes guy, you, can, you just... can still have a motive for doing a crime even Wait, though you on. might when have you say when no. you say mentally ill the shooting wasn't done at random he wasn't targeting people at random. He didn't randomly acquire a firearm. He didn't randomly draw up. Wait, what is hand. random? What is random? It, this what was planned saying? for like. When you, when you allude to this idea of mental illness, are you talking, what is he, schizophrenic? What do you mean by mentally ill? I'm saying he's disturbed. I'm saying he's somebody who's mentally yeah. unwell. And mentally, what does that mean? And, 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 what is, no, no, wait. You just you just restated the same thing twice. What, is, what do you mean by mentally ill? Did he have general anxiety disorder? Did he have depressive disorder? Was he manic? <laughs> oh what do you mean by oh my gosh. Mentally ill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody that thinks that shooting random people in a supermarket is some kind of means to an end to solve a political problem it just doesn't even make any sense this is a this is the fruit of a disturbed mind i don't need to uh, yeah you're right okay, so i didn't have a therapy well, session well, I'll, with I'll him you. but I'll he's not well there. I'll meet You'll you meet me there. I'll you meet know, you there. Come on, I'll meet man. You there. I thought no, you were just, cool I before. Ask you a question. I want to <laughs> get in your head. No, I want to ask you. I think I they got you in your head because we used to be able to have productive, honest you. conversations, but now you're going back to your disingenuous we're ways. A, well, we're having which a is sad. Now. Nick, Nick, my friend, we're having a debate right now. Okay. My question mm. for you then is: Okay, I'll, I'm, I'm coming to meet you halfway. Okay. Now you're mm. bringing in your pocket your mass shooters. I'm bringing all of my wonderful black BLM friends. Would you acknowledge then that the majority of the damage caused by the BLM riots were done by mentally ill people? Wasn't no, really I different? don't think so at all. I don't think Why? so at all. And don't you think it takes because... a mentally ill person to burn down a business, to attack business owners, to steal things? I think that I think that people being an opportunist, becoming an opportunist, and when there's chaos, looting a store. I think that's very different than somebody going out and buying a semi-automatic gun and creating a blueprint of a supermarket and going in and and shooting, uh, you know, unarmed, defenseless people. I think those are absolutely different things. Well, Would you I'm say not that like about that, whether or not they're different? I'm just saying that like no, it's not mental illness. Both of these are things that are far to the norm of what a human should do. Nothing that the shooter did implied any level of mental illness. It seemed like he was it, pretty. He absolutely he was pre, it seemed he was pretty coherent. His writings were relatively. No, like, do you know about the writings? He yeah, sixty-three percent of the of manifesto was fucking, plagiarized. I do you know that? Sure. Well, hey, listen, college students plagiarize all the time. They're not mentally ill, right? But like he was, he was <laughs> oh cogent enough to like draw out his so little map. disingenuous. He was cogent enough to he put That's all these little memes in. It seemed like he was like a relatively he sound left mind. wing. So hang on, hang on. Hey, so the idea the idea that we're just going to dismiss him going out and shooting people in a highly racially and politically motivated crime and just call him mentally ill, it feels like a little bit hand wavy to me. He's 18 years old. He had a record of he threatened to shoot up his school. He had this. That's extreme... not correct, by the way. Hang That's on, false. That is true. OK, so well, what's your what's your suspect? Because what you're going to say is you're going to say you're going to talk about. Wait, no, no. He's engaging with my question. No, you tell me. You tell me. Tell him, Wait, so you, okay. So what he hey, said is he had he had an assignment. You, so he had burn, sorry, it keeps pop the mic keeps popping. That's for you, Nick. 
Nick. It's, it's Nick. Yeah, yeah. Why is my? I have headphones on it. Every. It's rubbing against. It's rubbing against something. It's. I think it's, it's rubbing. Not. It's the. It's my. The irritating thing is that when the NSA is tapping your shit, you can hear the little blurbs every time they pick up oh, and hang up. It. I think that's no, probably, probably true. true. I think it would be better without the headphones. What do you guys? Yeah, think? probably. Probably. I'm just trying to help. I had a problem before the headphones. I was. I was too scared to say I'm glad they did. <laughs> better without the headphones. I, I'll just mute my. <laughs> okay, so the, the question I had for Nick is, when, Nick, when you say that he threatened to shoot up a school, what, what is what, what is that? What are you gathering that from? I don't know. I saw that in the news, but you tell me because you, you didn't do not. your research. Are you telling me <laughs> oh, you didn't no. do research for this? You just picked no, stuff thought, up. Well, At I least we're googling. You know, over here, me and Team Destiny, we're googling. But you're just yeah, oh, I, I, I heard thought, it on the news. I thought this was uh, I thought this was a discussion. I didn't know I was coming here to defend uh, my El Paso comments from August 2019. I thought that's not what this, this is about. This is about the topic. We're talking about the Buffalo shooter, right? Said three years ago that you can't. Not that it's restricted, but that you can. What did you mean by that? You said on the. But that's not what you this know, so question I, is about. Right, this right. question so is about the me, Buffalo shooting directly. You clearly know. You clearly know. Yeah, I was so just, just, just so, go ahead with your point. So well. he, he had an assignment where he was mm-hmm. talking about like what's his plans for the fucking summer holidays or one shit or something was, and he wrote like murder slash suicide on that assignment. He handed that in. The school was like, "Hey, by the way, uh, fucking police check this guy out." The police checked him out. He was given like a fifteen minute mental health check. By the way, which speaks to the strength of America's medical institutions. And then, do you know what he said? I think he said something like, oh, you know, it was just a joke and he, he got away with it because of that, which, I mean, it sounds very familiar. I can't quite recall. Oh, yeah, that, that's it. No, you're right. Yeah. That's a good point. No, that that's totally valid. He got an assignment and said, I'm going to murder and kill myself. And you're like, actually... That's not a school the shooting, though. You realize the that, right? therapist diagnosed him and said, yeah, oh, no, you're right. You clarified it and it totally supports your point. Did you see the picture of him in the hazmat suit? What's what's the clarification on what does that. that have to do with anything we're talking about so he's apparently this is from his parents they said that he was totally paranoid about catching covid and he would stay home from school and stay home from family events okay. he would even go to school in a hazmat suit where he's photographed the point i'm trying to make you get into well he didn't threaten to shoot up the school wait no no, no. Should that, go back to the hazmat what does the hazmat have to do with this i want i really want to know i'm, really I'm literally explaining it to you right now you really like the Batman movie, I think. <laughs> I'm literally explaining to you right now. The point is, you can say, oh, he didn't throw in a shoe to school. He just said he was going to murder and kill himself. He wears a hazmat suit. The point is, this is a guy who clearly is not well. That's the point I'm trying to make. When you're wearing a hazmat suit because you're afraid of COVID, when you're, you know, d- like making yourself sick because you're afraid of COVID, when you're doing these kinds of things, you're an 18 year old kid, you plagiarize 60% of the manifesto from Brenton Tarrant, and then you go out and kill people randomly. Obviously, this is a person who's not well. And to so, ascribe to this guy, you know, this was like a political actor is just completely disingenuous. No, you're I think completely So would the legal that. system would disagree with you, right? Because one of the primary things that can declare you like clinically insane and unfit to stand court and be given I'm not like that. He's oh, but, 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 hold on. But that's, a po- that, that's what you're trying to replicate. Insane. Like if somebody no, like, is mentally no, out well to the no, point where they don't understand what they're doing, they don't understand the motivations I'm not for it. They don't understand what he's doing. Okay, wait, hold on. He what he's doing and he's not legally mentally ill. Why are you calling him mentally ill that's i'm saying that i'm saying that this is a person who is not like this isn't somebody who went out there and did a shooting because this is a you know die hard like right-wing political actor i'm saying this is a guy who is mentally unwell or evil or something it. We're asking uh, evil, what you mean by bro, mentally right. unwell what i mean by uh, it's i think it's pretty obvious what i'm trying to say it'd be one thing if this is a guy who's like uh you know He's going out there and he's like a big right wing political actor. This is a guy who went on poll in 2020, allegedly, according to the story, went on poll during the pandemic, started reading stuff, plagiarized a manifesto, had a history of having these kinds of issues, having the history of these sort of unstable behaviors, and then goes and does a shooting. Now, do we attribute the shooting to the power of these ideas that he saw online? Or is this clearly somebody who's got a pattern of, you could call it unwellness, you could call it evil? immaturity whatever i wouldn't look at a left-wing person who's 18 and has the same issues and kill somebody because they're a communist or something sure. so and like, say oh wait, that's wait can, can i ask a, can i ask a really simple on, question i, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, I, road. I have to cool. okay so is it impossible for any 18 year old of mental wellness to commit a mass shooting um what is the question is it impossible for an is it 18 impossible year old for any 18 year old to commit yeah 18 year olds can commit mass shootings obviously no, that was the that. question whoa, whoa. what was the question whoa it... you okay yeah i'm cool you're the one you're the one hang on a second we're getting around the ramble asco? here we can go we're rambling again yeah we're in a debate i'm sorry if that makes you uncomfortable but we're in a debate okay. let me ask you this 
because we're getting to the weeds here. What, what's not. the no? We are. What's the central claim? Is the claim that what white genocide theory causes violence? Okay, is that I'm the gonna, claim? Yeah, that's okay, I'm, hold on. I'm connecting my fucking Hispanic soul to your Hispanic soul. Okay, I'll, I'll try. I'm gonna do one a good nice, thing. Funny I don't know why, I don't know if. I don't know if you're. I don't think you're good faith, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it for the purpose. I am. Time. Wait, you think I'm not arguing good faith? Why? <laughs> well, if you were, you wouldn't say it. So here, so here's the issue with the argument. You <laughs> okay. About, okay? Is it feels like you've essentially created an argument where it is impossible for anybody under the age of 19 or 20 to do a politically motivated shooting. That basically a person can say, hey, I read this media, I was radicalized in this way, and I went and I, I committed a mass shooting that's literally in accordance with the political media that I consume. And you're going to say, well, by virtue of that person being under age, he must have been mentally unwell. So we can't analyze why he did it. We can't try to figure out if there's a way we could prevent it in the future. We can't figure out if anything could have contributed to it because he's really mentally unwell. Therefore, he has no responsibility for his actions. Now, when I say he's mentally unwell, I'm not going to define a mental illness that might, you know, explain some of his crazy actions, maybe call him borderline or something. We're not going to do that. And we're also not going to say that he's legally incompetent to stand trial. So he's got some sort of moral agency for the actions he's did. But we're, we're just going to, we're going to give him all the responsibility he needs, but we're going to stop right up to the point to figuring out why did he go and commit the act that he did? Because in Nick's world, it sounds like what you're saying, that had he not been politically radicalized, maybe he would have just gone and did a random shooting in bumfuck nowhere and just killed like 10 people in like a, a county CVS or something. That's what it sounds like. Wait, can we get back to the point? And Nick never said Wait, this is the that, point. This is the Buffalo no, no, shooting. The point is you said replacement migration believing in that causes mass shootings that's not what we said that's not what, what we said, said is that if you believe a hyper elite cabal of people is intentionally replacing a group of people yeah, no, and then you're the, arguing over the dumbest point saying oh was he mentally ill or not you know what okay mental well, that was hold on. That because that was that's Nick's you're point, arguing right? about can we talk about the real issue here please okay hold on that's i have a question i have a question what? for you You know what? because i'm really surprised you, you, said we, no, hold on. you said that we Fake. push white genocide and that causes kids to shoot up grocery stores so okay, let's talk about that Let's talk about the Buffalo fucking shooting and stop talking about all these gay semantics, please. So I, I have a question for you, uh, because <laughs> I was I was actually expecting you to agree with me here and, and us here, Baked Alaska, because uh, in 2019, after the Chrysler shooting, you released uh, an emotional video where you were apologizing for your past participation in meme culture. And you said things like, oh, I was brainwashed. I felt like I was part of a cult. And you talked about right. the link between meme culture and the Christchurch mass shootings. And you warned conservatives about radicalization to the far right and what that might mean in terms of violence. Um, so well, Ashton Whitty made him do so, that. Hold on, hold on. Ashton Whitty brainwashed uh -huh, him. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. So that. what, what happened true. since then? What happened since then, Bates? Domestic abuse. He was a victim of domestic abuse. From okay, the I'm, asking, I'm asking Baked a question. He's like said like three sentences during this. I am his I have custodianship over Baked Alaska. <laughs> oh man. And uh he was man, brainwashed dude. by his psycho ex girl. He agrees with us. That. I don't know why he's he arguing against us now. Like, come on, what is this? Well, can I speak? Can yeah, I go for it. Please? Nick decided to speak over you. He's clearly like oh, you because keep speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I was the one that spoke over you there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Maybe I understand now why Nick's a custodian. Shut the fuck up. Holy shit. Like, we need a mute button on that guy. Um, okay, so, yeah. Let the pod collector talk, all right? The pod collector is speaking. Obviously, look, those videos were cringe. My ex-girlfriend wrote the scripts, la, la, la. That's a thing for a whole nother story, but um, for another day. But here's the thing. Yes, I think violence is wrong. I think, you know, I saw people cheering on, uh, you know, and, and you, you got to understand, there's different... Um, categories of right-wing people there's people that were cheering this on i don't know if they're right wing left wing it's on 4chan i don't fucking know but the point is i wanted to make a distinction that i'm not some richard spencer guy i don't believe that u.s needs to be 100 white and you became blah, a yang ganger you keep going with these fake theories, okay? <laughs> fake theories? Wait, are you yeah, telling me? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Are you telling me there is not a video so out of you right now where you do a rap song in favor of Yang? Little faggot bitch. Is that what you're telling me? Let me talk. No. Are you denying I mean, the existence of a rap talk. video where you like talk about what? how cool Yang is? Weasel. We're going like back, to the, We're going back to the minute stuff, so I'm gonna start big time over now. So go ahead, big. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Brittany. Mm -hmm. Look. I put out a video, like I said, it wasn't the best way to say it, but I, I, I still stand with what I was saying. I don't agree with violence. I don't agree with people saying, oh my gosh, yeah, this guy killed 50 people. That's so cool. Yeah, I spoke out against that. I agree. And some people, yes, 
I, whether it's right wing, whether it's left wing, whether it's fucking 4chan, have you ever heard of terminally online? Like, it doesn't matter what the fuck it is. You know, there's furries that fucking shoot people. There's fucking weirdos that shoot people. The point is, if you get so entrenched in any online culture and you don't, like, you just lose yourself and, and you become mentally ill, that's fucking dangerous. And, and you need to be grounded. You need to stay in reality. And that's what I was saying. Okay. I don't approve of that shooting. I don't approve of this shooting. I don't approve of any shooting. I'm not saying you approve of any shooting, okay? Really, I, 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 I believe you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... We, we can work with this, Beg. You know, so, like, we, we don't... You know, wait, let, let me yeah. jump in. No, 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 please. Let me... Beg no, doesn't no, talk no, for no, anything at all. Talk. You and you Destiny talk. have spoken yeah, more than anybody yeah, else you here. Talk. You and Destiny have spoken more than anybody. Let Nick talk. It's my turn. Handing over fucking speech privileges to your custodian as well, huh? Like, fuck. That's right. That's right. My, uh, my pog collector over there. Are you, are you the greatest? Yeah. So go bail him up. So look, the, um, uh, I think the whole thing about New York, well, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's somebody else. Let's just say for the sake of argument. Okay. He's not me. I, that's my opinion that he is far right because far right is antisocial. That's my speculation. But let's say for the sake of argument, we could even talk about someone like Anders Brevik, or we could talk about whoever. It's not to say that people can't commit acts of terrorism with a political motivation. I just dispute the details about this particular one. But let's get into the bigger question about the relationship between the theory and, and violence. That's why I say we're getting into the weeds. It's my opinion, and, and I think it makes sense, that an 18-year-old with that kind of history of behavior, we look at the right-wing manifesto not as uh, he's a political actor, but as an expression of it's it's the most antisocial thing a person can come up with. But we could use a different example, and you could say, oh, okay, well that that's an example we can agree upon. I can give you a different example. An example of legitimate. No, hang on, I'm not finished. Your time over. Whatever it is. Um, and then so the question becomes, I, I guess what you're trying to argue is like, well, based on your rhetoric, it implies there's no peaceful solution, and therefore the necessary outcome is political violence. And I would dispute that because the goal of the America First movement is exactly that, to give people a political outlet. Even though we're restricted, even though they're trying to prevent us from doing that, even though we're, or I should say, we're being prevented in a, a lot of ways from doing that, that's the goal of what we're doing. Why do you think we hold big conferences? Why do you think we advocate for people getting involved in the midterm elections, build a platform so that we can promulgate the message? Um, it's to provide that outlet for that political solution. The question which I'm interested in is not like, well, does this idea insinuate a violent? There are lots of ideas that can imply violence. Libertarians say taxation is theft. You know, so that means that everyone's paying taxes, everyone's getting held up at gunpoint for money. Would we like there's you could say there's a necessarily violent uh, message in there. Oh, well, libertarians don't commit terrorist shootings. That's an interesting question of why that's not happening, but it doesn't mean that there's not some kind of implied like motive for violence. What I'm interested in is the fact that the replacement migration is occurring, it, and that is happening immaterial of whatever it is. If it's a mentally ill person, Brittany, it must have been a minute from agency, now. Like, it doesn't what, what is this? If you're gonna come on, okay, cool. So, let's talk about this. Um, there's a wide range. So, I'm just gonna ask there's, there's a, a very simple question to Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes, if well, just argue in good faith, on, we don't need this, to do no, 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 it's a simple question. Oh, come on, what is this? this? No, no, there's no need to start over because I'm just trying to have a good faith dialogue where I say something, I ask a question, he gives me a question, and then you're full. You're of shit. You're day, day, really day. Hostility. Come on. Yeah, I know. No, Come Destiny, on. It's really necessary. Yeah, Destiny, on. You're, you're all right. Wait, hold on. This Brittany, guy, excuse me. Brittany, step in. Okay. Step in, Brittany. Destiny, you're Come on, awesome. Brittany. Come on. This I see you sitting here. What the fuck is this, Brittany? Starting. Your minute isn't started. All right, go. Bro. Okay, but that's, that's some fucked up shit. Okay, regardless. Okay, <laughs> I have a question for you, Nick. Just a very simple. It's, this is a, this is a literally yeah. a yes or no question, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody does a shooting and they state that my goal with this shooting is to kill white people. Would you say that is a racially motivated shooting? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. So this guy in his manifesto literally has a segment where he says, goals, kill as many blacks as possible. Yeah. When, when did you say it wasn't racially motivated? Yeah, I didn't say it wasn't racially motivated. He literally okay. never said that. So, you guys have been arguing about mental illness this whole time. Yeah. 
Wait, wait, I want to ask you guys. Okay, so no, no, okay, hold on, okay. That, that was the first... Oh, no, 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 I, I, I still have one my one my winner from before. I didn't properly use my mint. Okay, the second thing. Okay, second question. Second simple question. the shooter You gave your time. You gave your thing to your caretaker before. Okay, so here's the second thing. Okay, hold on. Okay, I can give it to you. Baked. Baked. Hang on, hang on. Okay, it's not really important. Baked, do you think... Would you say that you're a rational person, Baked? Was the shooter meant to be? Baked, would you say that you're a rational oh, person? Wait, what, what, what is I don't know if the I don't know if the shooter I don't know if the shooter's mentally ill. I haven't seen any I haven't seen any evidence to the point of him being diagnosed. Was he mentally ill? I'm answering the question. I'm saying I don't know. I haven't seen any evidence to the point where he's been diagnosed with anything. That's funny. I think I think speculating about people's mental disorders. So I answered your question. I would like you to answer mine. Based Alaska, would you consider yourself to be a rational person? What does that have to do with it? I don't understand why you're making it. Him I'm building on something, Brittany. Okay, just stay with me for a second. Just make so, your hold on, Bait, Bait Alaska. Would you consider yourself a rational person? I'm not doing a fucking gay therapy session with you, buddy. You can ask me a real question. These, they're terrified of answering my questions. Like this is actually no, fucking ridiculous. Your if you're too scared to answer a question about whether or not you think you're rational, you know, oh fucking gosh. something's gone wrong Boo. in this debate. Okay. Boo. So, Boo. so I would say, I would say, this is why I would say, I would say that if you had somebody uh, tell you that, hey, by the way. Um, there are a group of people who are going to kill you within your lifetime, okay? If you have a- if, if somebody tells that to you, me as a rational person, I'm gonna be like, holy shit, I'm gonna do everything within my fucking power to stop that from happening. So, for example, when Nick Fuentes says things like, if you are a uh, white male Zoomer, remember that the people in power hate you and your unborn <laughs> children, and they will try to genocide you in your lifetime, yeah, me, as a rational actor, can be driven towards actions like mass shootings. Because mm, essentially, if go. you think that that's an outlet towards Better resolving these things, and if you're told that nothing else fucking works, that's where it's gonna lead you. That's where you're gonna I'm go. Wait, begging the question. Nothing else works. Where did Nick say nothing else works? I already read through that quote before, but I don't know what, I don't know what to Yo, tell where, you. Where, where did Nick say nothing else works? We can't he, use mass media, we can't run for ways, office, we can't change policy, so at a certain point, what's the expectation? Besides violence that work. Such as midterm elections and getting people to AFPAC and coalescing a ground root. No, 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 Nick doesn't believe that as well because Nick has said oh, things he like, hey, that? okay, what? hey, 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 what, what can you and I do? I don't hold in on. My own activism. Okay, hold on. Listen, listen, Nick, that. Nick. So when you said, hold on, Nick, oh, when you said, God. what this can you man. and I do to a state legislator oh, besides wow. kill them? Oh, we shouldn't do that. I'm not advising that, but I mean, go. what else no, can you do, right? Sounds wink, like wink, nudge, nudge. I've explained, I've explained that quote a million times. And, and, and ironically, ironically, that quote was about participating in the electoral process. I said... The argument was about the Senate runoff between Leffler and Purdue in Georgia. Uh -huh. And people were saying, you can't withhold your vote. You can't abstain from voting. You have to go out and vote Republican or else the left is going to get in. And I said, what else can you do other than withhold your vote? Other, other than, than kill them is what you said. Vote. Don't lie. Besides and kill I them. Said, and then what did I say right after that? And then what did I say right after that? I, I read out the quote, quote before, but you were too busy interrupting read me. Read I can read it out again. Read I'll read out the whole quote. quote. Okay. Right Here we go. That. What I say right after What that? can you and I do to a state legislator besides kill them? Now, we and shouldn't do that. I'm that? not advising that. But I mean, what else can you do, right? I said... And I literally said, and you can't do that. I'm not advising you to do that. I said, but what else can you what do? What else can you and do except for kill them? Now, I'm not saying you should kill them, but like, vote. what else can you except do, for right? Except withhold your vote. Except for withhold your vote. Which is what I said. No, what the whole this show is was clearly about. about killing them, dog. Like, that oh was the previous statement. Oh, you, you really know. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what, Destiny? I think, or oh, actually, political book. Next time Wait, you put you me on a panel, no, I would, you know, I would really see, appreciate this is, it this is if you not, made sure that everybody for? else on the panel has passed like a third grade reading comprehension test, okay? Before we do this, uh, because uh, this is like, I can't fucking deal with this. Brain cell check. We did an IQ test on the debate. You know, the problem with this kind of conversation is, we're not actually even trying to understand each other's positions or get at the truth. What you're trying to do is this cheap gotcha shit where it's like, well, but you said it, hmm, let me, are you a rational actor? Hmm, well, in 2019, you said this. It's like, you know, we're trying to talk about white genocide and the relationship to political violence. And you want to play this game where it's like, oh, but on your show, you said this. And 
I mean, who is this for? Ultimately, what is the point of all of this? I mean, we're here. We're here now. If you want to debate my show from two years ago, you could just log off and do a stream about my show. And you could monologue about how, well, if he says this in 2019 and he said this in 2021, then the only implication is this. You could do that on your own stream. We're here to debate the other position. And instead of engage with us right here now and what we're saying, you'd rather do this uh, soliloquy based on these um you know, based on these prior statements. So, sure. so I, so, I, as far as the white genocide good, is concerned, somebody, as somebody with a good amount of internet history and quotes as well, we're we're them, um, I, so responding in, in good faith to Nick, um, if somebody were to ask me about my prior quotes, um, and I've made a lot of them, I've had my mm. political positions have evolved quite a bit over the past six years. Uh, there, there's two ways that I can respond. I can either say like, I'm not going to talk about those quotes at all. Or I can say my positions have changed. Now, if you want to have that conversation, that's totally fine. It's like, well, Hey, my positions have changed, but it's we, we can't we didn't come here to box with shadows right it's not fair in in a in a conversation where all of our kind of pasts well at least for three of us um because rose is relatively new on the same uh, on the scene all of our pasts are material to the conversations that we have we're all talking about like how have we all contributed to the media environments we live in how we contributed to the political scenes that we're in how did any of the people in here potentially contribute to the ideology of the shooter um for you to not be able to either simultaneously either either own or disavow or at least acknowledge things that you've said in the past makes us wonder like, well, what the fuck do you believe in? If, if I could get a new Nick Fuentes Nick or a new Baked Alaska every single time I'm having a conversation, then I, it's boxing with shadows. So just, if you want to say, if you want to say, well, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, wait, let me finish right one out of context. He just, it. if, if, if it is out of context, then that's fine. Then you say that. I've that's said very anything. Said. That's what I'm saying. That's what he literally sure. said. Hold he on. said, read the whole thing. Brittany, am I getting, did I get another minute, Brittany? Did I earn it? You no. can, but I think that, okay, yeah. All right. Cool, thank you, awesome. Cool. I have a double team in here. Okay? I'm fine, fine. And the reason no one brings up- Wait, wait, I'm gonna have to start it over. I'm gonna have to start it over, Bakes. You are, and no if one watches your show, but go ahead. Okay. If you believe right, that ahead. it's out of context, then just say like, oh, well, here's the context for that quote. What else do you want to talk about? Rather than the grant, don't open your eyes, because what you've done is you've grandstanded. I'm not here to talk about things that I said in 2018. I'm not here to have- Oh, but hang on. But I'm providing the context, and then I do, and you go, oh. Well, I don't believe you. It's like, okay, so then what are we doing here? That's exactly what I did. I said, well, the context for that quote was the election and blah, blah, blah. And you're just like not interested in that. And then you can hit well, me with, I never said, oh, I but here's Rose what you said. Okay, well, that's what Rose If you want to, if you want to provide the context, you provide the context. But if you, if you don't believe in those things anymore, if your position have changed, then of course you have the right to say that. But you can't be surprised that as a political actor who might be involved in the influencing of a politically violent act, that somebody is going to bring up the political statements that you've made that might politically influence political shootings. It's it's, it's absurd to be upset but it's about being, that. But, but it's being brought up in a disingenuous... It would be one thing if my show every night was like, oh, total violence, total war. But you, you cherry-pick two out-of-context things over the course of three fucking years, it's never, not never mentioning... It's not about it is, cherry though. It is, though, because yeah, every you show that this, I Nick, do... You're smarter than this, right? It's not, it's not about just what are the statements, right? On every single fucking wrestling show you watch, there's the warnings before and after, like, don't try this shit at home. And how many kids oh, kill themselves on. growing up trying fucking wrestling moves right like it's just an idea of like we need to be aware of what's being said who's influencing who and not just write off every time something bad happens as well that guy was mentally ill and when i said it i was clearly just being it's not it's not writing it off it's not writing it off you say i'm writing it off you're not paying attention and as far as the quotes that have been provided i have explained the context which makes perfect sense and then people oh well i don't believe the context because you know because i, I read the quote and it's like you're pointing to two quotes over the course of three years. I do a show every night for five years. And in the vast majority of the shows, the message is about, I've talked about so-called accelerationism. I've talked about so-called race war, civil war, these kinds of things. If you take the breadth of what I've said on this question, if anything, I've said the opposite of what you seem to think I've implied in two out of context things over the course of three years. What I've said, my message constantly has been, we do not want violence. Violence is not going to go well for anybody. I've said that, like, not only is it not, it's going to go poorly for both sides, but also it's something that we're probably not going to win. It doesn't even make sense as a strategy. What I have said consistently is that we need a political solution to these problems that we will get through mass popular political organizing, either at the federal level, at the state level. And, you know, and I didn't come here prepared with every listing of every time I've had this discussion about political violence, but that's the breadth of my show. And nobody could watch my show 
uh, consistently and come away with any other kind of message. That's why I say, and it's not that my positions change, it's just that you, you can take one thing that was said and it sounds a certain way, and again, you could take one or two or three of those things over three years and try and attribute some kind of secret implied message or something. But what I'm saying is where those things are being said, they're being taken out of context. And the breadth of my position on this has been peaceful. Sure. Um, and and so, listen, and I'm not surprised I'll, it's being I'll brought up. It's just, sure. you know, and I'll, I'll be better faith than, than Rose Riss, who's very ideologically opposed to you. Um, I'm half Nazi apparently now, um, but then yeah. like, so you're, here's you're a fascist. Question. So <laughs> Here, here's a question that, that I would ask. Okay. What, what if it was the case? Okay. I'm not, no, I'm not saying this was the case because it was. But what if it was the case that in his manifesto he said something like, um, "On my journey to the right, like I watched a lot of Nick Fuentes' America First. I agreed with a lot of what he said that that we were being replaced and that there was kind of like this organization against like white people that they hate us and the government doesn't listen to us or censoring us ever." If if st if statements like that were made, would that give you pause or would you just say, like, "Ah, oh, fuck him. The guy's just a crazy radical." Um, it would probably give me pause. It probably would give me pause, but. By the same token, uh, I think you'd agree that there is only so much that a person can say. If my, I think that that would happen in a different universe where my show is very different. There's a reason that my name doesn't crop up in these things. There's a reason that, you know, my name and my show isn't brought up. In fact, you'll find that the most antisocial elements of the so-called far right hate me. You know, the, the alt-right hates me. The um, so-called national socialists and white nationalists don't like me. Countercurrents is a magazine that calls itself white nationalists. They just wrote a hit piece about me this week. Uh, Richard Spencer just did a, a Twitter. Well, and he's not even really. He's like a liberal now, basically. But that guy's never liked me. Um, you talk to the most extreme people. You talk to the proponents of violence, and they think I'm like Mexican and, uh, you know, all these kinds of things. Um, so, so, like, you know, you could ask a theoretical what if. I think that almost answers the question in itself. Well, there's a reason that when these things occur, like the America first is never in the conversation. It's because we're pushing a Christian, not a racialist message. I think that you can only do acts of indiscriminate, or, or I should say discriminate, uh, racial killings if you're, if you're a materialist, if you're a racialist. America first is a Christian movement, not a racialist movement. Always has been. Even, you guys even don't have a preference for like European or white majority American demographics or anything? That's something you've completely dropped from your platform? Well, what do I mean when I say racialist? I mean that yeah, there are people that, that worship race. There are people that think that race is the end-all, be-all. We don't think that. In some sense, we're universalist because we're Christian. I think that anybody can become Christian. I think anybody can become saved. Yeah, like, Everybody's say, equal if I, before if I God. Ask you, if I would ask you, let's say we have on our borders right now two caravans. On one end, we've got a million secular Danish people. And then mm -hmm. on the other end, we've got a million pretty Catholic Nigerians. Who would you want coming to the United States of America? Well, uh, ultimately, I'd probably prefer the Danish. But if you're a Christian nation and you prefer Christians and anybody can be Christian, why the Danish over the Nigerians? Because they're culturally assimilable in the way the Nigerians aren't. What does that when mean? you say that Nigerians aren't culturally assimilable, assimilatable what like these are not of the are, same race they're not of the same race so how are you not racialized then you're talking about some form of racial essentialism being good faith because like, well like, again yeah it's it's not i didn't say that i wasn't a race essentialist it's not to say that i i don't think that race is an essential characteristic of people but you have in the far right a there is a real distinction between people that are christian and people that are not and the people that are not christian they view the world as racial conflict like cammy catboy cammy a lot of people don't know this, but the guy's like an extreme wig nat, and he's like an atheist, and he thinks that like the the only solution is to have only white people and this kind of thing. Um, and I don't want to speak for him, but there there are people like him who are out there, and they think that violence, ethnic cleansing, is a legitimate political solution to the problem of diversity. Sure, I, I understand I don't that think you're that. against all of that, but like you have to understand that it feels like we're. I don't want to say that you're dancing, but to go from like, well, Christianity is a universal thing to Ethiopians are like in another universe, I guess. <laughs> they're like, not like, another why, universe, like, but but they're they're different in significant ways. And it doesn't sure, but just then, because, then Christianity is not as universal as you made it sound then, right? It well, like there might be some no. racial component to the religion. No. Well, here's here's well, I'll just simplify it. Very, I'll make it very simple for you. Sure. If you're a racialist, you have no qualms about killing people of a different race.
No. If you're a Christian, I bet yeah. you can find it's like the different like you can probably find some like white nationalists who are just like separatists. They don't want to murder everybody else. They just want to have okay, their, own but, their own places, right? There are probably some racialists that are like, the races are different. I don't think we get along with these people. I don't want to kill them, but I just wish that they would fuck off back to their own country and I can have my country, right? That's there could be yeah, there, there are people, okay, there, there can be. But the only people that this is what I'm trying to say, the only people that are going out there and killing people of another race because they think they're inferior or because they have some kind of white nationalist philosophy, the not not it's it's like not squares and rectangles, you know, not all racialists are violent, but all the violent you know people that are killing in the name of race are race first they are race idolaters as opposed to christians a christian could not do that would not do that and if they did it would be incompatible with their stated beliefs you know a dylan roof a uh this guy whoever you know you notice that none of these guys are christian and believe in the the fact that the the sort of equality of souls before god in the way that catholics and christians do that's the meaningful and that's what i'm trying to say so you can't take my my show which is uh, has a message about political activism and a show philosophically that says that murder and killing is wrong and everyone's equal. And even though we don't think that multiracial is good for a country, we believe that everyone's equal before God and should be treated with dignity and respect. You know, I said in, in my AFPAC 2 speech, you know, we're against cruelty and prejudice, but like we have a nation here, you know, and that and these things are separate though. So, um, so nobody could watch my show based on those two things, the Christian element and the political activism component. And I think reasonably and rationally walk away with the idea that I am encouraging or okay with people killing um, morally or, or as a political tactic. So Nick, then do you believe that like your political or ideological identity is like more salient than your racial identity then when it comes to the construction of a country? Would you say that my political philosophy is more salient? No, than no. My race? Would, would you say that a a like your like as a like a person's political or ideological identity is more like salient to the identity, or to whether or not you would allow them in the nation than their racial identity is? So you're saying like if they're conservative or if they're white? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying what's more important, political ideological ad identity or racial identity? Um, for the sake of immigration, probably race. Okay, so then it seems like race is like a major, very, very important part of your ideological movement then. Yeah, and I haven't said that it's not a part of it. I, Like I said, I believe the race is real. Wait, what's your definition but... for racialist then? Well, okay, yeah, maybe racialist isn't the best term. I, I guess the better term would be like race idolater, because there are people that have this conviction that race is like a, like a, a deeply spiritual thing, and um, and they believe in like folk ethnic religions, like paganism as a as like a white folk religion, and um, you know, and that's different than somebody who believes that everybody's like created by the same God and so on. So, do you call yourself a racialist then? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I like that term. I call myself a racist. Oh. <laughs> no, kidding, kidding. Of course, I don't call myself that. <laughs> um, right. I'm, but uh, I'm a race realist, is what I would say. Okay, I have, I have just have like a, a a question for for Baked or or Nick then, because yeah. from my understanding, okay, both of you agree that white genocide is something that is happening. Um, <laughs> so if if you think somebody is trying to genocide you, doesn't that give you the moral right to kill them in self defense? Um. Well, it's, it's sort of a complicated question because when you look at this shooting, who did the, this guy killed like random people like ran? Well, I mean, they were black, but obviously, but, but they were replacers. Random, they were, sh they were shoppers, you know, Re people replacers in the, um, and they were replacers of, the, yeah. of white people. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's what I'm trying to get at here is like, um, if you have somebody who's deliberately doing a genocide, uh, yeah, that person should probably be, you know, tried and something should happen to them. But if you're talking about innocent people, I've gone out of my way on my show to say that I don't really even blame, I don't even blame the people that are in the country, even the people coming illegally, I don't blame them. It makes sense why people would come here illegally. It's not their fault. Uh, and I don't think it's justified to kill, obviously, people like that. I think the responsible thing to do is a, when a political policy is being carried out, it requires a political solution. And Schmidt talks about this. It's when when something like this is occurring, it's not the same as like uh, your neighbor murdered your wife. When a political, in the same way that when the president invades Iraq, it's not the same thing as, uh, you know, George Bush stabbed an Iraqi a hundred times, you know, it's political. And so I think that there's sort of this fallacy where, you say, oh, well, if you're saying that there's a white genocide, doesn't that mean you're justifying killing them? It's like, well, not quite, not quite, uh, because 
the genocide, whether it's personal or impersonal, is a political act. And that's uh, so. So you would say then, so to distill your position, a statement one could logically derive from what you just said would be, um, in some cases, it is not okay to engage in self-defense against somebody who is genociding you. You, mu you must believe that then, yes? Um, yeah, essentially. Okay. I mean, you're, the phrasing is sloppy, and I, I know why you're phrasing it that way. The phrasing is not sloppy in any way, shape, or form. It is. That is perfectly is, distilled from what you just said. Be, mm, yeah, but it, you're stating it, you're restating it in a reductive way, obviously, in a loaded way. Um, you know, what I'm saying is like, so this mass immigration is occurring, and by certain definitions, this constitutes a genocide in the sense of, the, you know, the United Nations does have a definition for, like, a cultural genocide. And, Wait, to be know, clear, immigration doesn't fit any international definition of genocide. Like, never. Uh, case, yeah, but. it does, actually. I mean, the, there is a cultural genocide being perpetrated against white America, by definition it is. Yeah, hold on. By, there is no definition of cultural genocide. That's not like Yes, a, there is. Yes, okay. there is. So I is mean, that all you're referring to? Is that all you're referring to when you say white genocide? You're only referring to cultural genocide? At this stage, yes. At this stage, yeah. Because obviously... Okay, what well, if you're talking about people, culture, then why all the race stuff? Well, the cultural genocide, the culture is the artifact of the race. So do you think, like, culture is inherently derived from race? Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, Why do you think that? And the point is to say this. When I say white genocide, I don't mean that whites are being, like, systematically put in concentration camps and murdered. I think that that may happen in the future. I think that there may be extrajudicial killings of whites by gangs or vigilantes or like you have in South Africa. That's another debate. Maybe you disagree with that characterization. But well, I think for those kinds of killings, they try to get only 18 year olds to do them so that it's not actually that bad. Ha, 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 that's that's elements, funny. You know? Good callback. Well, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is like, that's obviously not what's happening now. And I'm not saying that's what's happening now. We're talking about erasure, and uh, this is an impersonal process that's happening. You know, whites aren't being rounded up and killed, but they are at below replacement levels of fertility, and people are being brought in to, to replace them and, and, you know, obviously take over the cities and the neighborhoods. And, and I don't mean that in a loaded way. I mean that just, you know, s simply speaking, they're comprising a larger proportion of population in these places. And that does constitute a cultural genocide. It constitutes a genocide in a meaningful way. Now, are we going to go out and murder people? I don't think murder is ever appropriate. But as a political process, I think it should be opposed politically. Okay. Do you think? Do you think I, me as a person, me Rose, am am mm. I going to get Hi. genocided? Hello. Uh, I don't know. I don't, where do you live again? Uh, I'm currently in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Maybe. Maybe I'll get killed by Muslims. Maybe I'll get killed well, by he's from, Muslims. Yeah, he's from Sweden. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Here. So I'm curious. This is. Well, I'm just following the political experiment. If you had it your way, I think you've, I've heard you answer this before. Whatever, if mm -hmm. you had it your way, would you like ship people back to countries of origin or whatever, like non-white people back to countries of origin? Would that be part of your political project? No. Okay, so I you would probably just try to control for the percentage of like non-white immigrants that are coming in the future, I imagine. I would just try and control them. Here, I'm not even opposed to non-white immigration necessarily. What I'm opposed to is millions of people every year. And at this point at all, I wouldn't even accept European immigrants at this stage. But I'm opposed to the scale. You could bring in 100,000 of anybody, and it wouldn't matter who they are. You could bring in 100,000 of anybody every year. They could be from Congo. It, it wouldn't matter just in terms of numbers. But the problem is it's not 100,000. It's millions for uh, for decades, for generations. Okay, so let's say we, we stop immigrating. Okay, so for example, Nick, both you and I agree that, for example, if you have uh, somebody who is, they have one black parent and one white parent, we probably wouldn't consider that person white, right? For example, Obama. Right. He's half. Mm -hmm. He has one black. So if, if they're black, then and we have a country that has non white people in it and has white people in it, then even if we completely stop all immigration, eventually what is going to happen is you will see the non white population make up larger portions of the total percentage of the population there. So you will still see what you call replacement. So what's your what's your solution for that? Well, I don't, I don't even consider that replacement because when I say replacement, it, we're talking about something very deliberate, which is not like intermarrying. Hold on, wait a second. That we, part to clarify, because we don't want to attack in this later. When you say deliberate, because that, because our initial claim was like, do you think it's a deliberate process by elite people? Well, oh, here's what, what I mean, mean by deliberate. deliberate. Yeah. When I, I mean deliberate, I mean mass immigration is deliberate. 
like mass immigration for the purpose of replacing white people. No, no. I, I don't I see the the question of whether or not whites are being replaced intentionally, I think is largely speculative in, in my opinion. Um what we know is happening is that, in other words, that the goal is like, well, if the country's too white, we need to make it non-white. I mean, I think there are probably some people that are cheerleading it for that reason, but I think that in I think that what we can prove definitively is that immigrants are being brought in deliberately. Maybe not necessarily with the intention of changing the racial makeup. That may just be a side effect, but certainly they're being brought. So in it's not with the intent, correct? Right, then it's not with the intent well, to change the demographics, right? That's what you maybe, just said. Maybe. I don't think you could prove that. No, okay, I don't, so, I don't th I'm not interested in proving okay. that for this debate. But then back to the, the, okay, back to the previous thing you said then. So then you would be perfectly fine with, you had a population, you have, you have no immigration, but eventually after like, you know, X amount of years, the entire population essentially becomes non-white by today's standards. And it was not because there was no more immigration. It was just reproductive forces within this population for a sufficient amount of time. By everything you've said right now, I would be fair in assuming that you would have no problems with that, correct? If we, yeah, it, well, here's the thing, though. If we stopped immigration, largely, the demographic transition would halt. No, it would be slower. People, it wouldn't halt, though. It wouldn't stop, it, correct? It, by and large, it would. A lot Wait, how, that doesn't make any sense, this. because people will have interracial yes, relationships. Yes, we it have does, a, because interracial relationships are a very small percentage of the relationships. They're but climbing they rapidly. They're single, you know, rapidly well, think, from, what, like, 3 to 6%? Well, I think there's two things you have to connect with. One is that they're growing, maybe small, but sure. But the second is that um, these racial groups in the United States are still outperforming white groups when it comes to breeding or child. But they're all slowing down. But all they the are fertility slowing, rates. Well, are that's what down. it's all, that's all that's happening. Yeah, but still, they're slowing down. But they're they're coming in line with white fertility rates. Right? What I'm like, trying to say here. Yeah. Is, is that the immigration is really the biggest driver. Because yeah, you're right. I mean, th there is there are, um, you know, these interracial marriages that are happening. And and you're right, the Hispanics and I, I think the blacks are a little bit higher. They do have a higher fertility rate. But in America, the Hispanic and black fertility rates are slowing down. The interracial relationships is a negligible percentage. So largely, the demographic transition, almost all of it's being driven by immigration. If you didn't have the immigration, the demographic transition, you're right, it wouldn't stop completely, but it would considerably slow down, and it would not have the same impact. America in 2050, with immigration versus without it, it's significantly different. Wait, when you say um, when you say 1950, so are you then talking about deportations said 2050. until 2050. 2015? Okay, my bad. Um, okay, but then, so you would be fine then that, hey, after X amount of time, we will live in a society in which we're all some, you know, we all consider non-white by today's standards. You, you would be okay with that? Um, well, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't want that to but, happen. But, but, it's a, but it's a reality, right? Because from everything no, we've agreed upon right now, it will, it will eventually happen. You agreed that it no, wouldn't why halt. Is that no, because no. hold on, no. why because if you said before, happen? you said before that you agreed that it would not halt. You, you said that it wouldn't halt completely. It wouldn't, it I would, didn't say it wouldn't halt completely. It, it, you said you said it would dramatically slow down, correct? But it wouldn't halt. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So if it's not stopping, if it's if it's still happening but slower, then it stands to reason then that after a sufficient amount of time, that will encompass the majority of the population, correct? I, I don't see. Here's the thing, though. I think that it would slow to such a rate that I I don't know that it would even happen in this century. I don't know that it would ever happen. I wouldn't. And when I say it wouldn't grind to a halt, I mean what I say, what I'm trying to say is banning immigration wouldn't stop America from becoming more non-white, but eventually it would slow down so much that it would be negligible over time because it's being driven primarily by immigration. So I think it's actually without immigration, what I'm trying to say is without immigration in the picture, it's not a foregone conclusion that America would become majority non-white by today's standards. I, I would, I would dispute that that is inevitable. Okay. Uh, I would think that that, that, Probably makes sense, but uh, just back to one thing because I want to get Baked Alaska involved with it because he's just been sitting there mostly. I don't know. Well, ask me a question. Um, yeah. So, for example, <laughs> we were talking about. So, in my opening statement, I defined, uh, you know, what's it called, replacement or the Great Replacement specifically as being something that has to do with race mostly, right? I talk about whiteness and stuff like that, and then you very proudly proclaimed UN.org uh, replacement yes. migration. Yes. So you, you, that was yeah. a very advanced technique. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the Google. I wasn't ready for the report. Oh, wow. um, but I, I've, I've, I've out, I've out techniqued you. Okay, I've out techniqued you. I decided, I decided to read what you linked me. I thought you looked like Harry Potter, but you actually looked like a kid from Stranger Things. Am I allowed to to continue here? 
Okay, yeah, so what, what it reads here, it defines the term replacement migration. It says, replacement migration refers to the international migration that a country would need to offset population decline and population aging, resulting from low fertility mortality rates. So it doesn't have a racial component to it. This isn't the UN conceding to the fact that, oh, we want, you know, replacement migrations as a solution in order to change something about the races. It has to do with population demographics. I mean, I mean, yeah, age demographics. I, I didn't read that whole thing, but, you know, it, it's undisputed that, you know, the white population has been declining, obviously, in the U.S. And, you know, that's what we're talking about in regards to the Buffalo shooting. I mean, I have a New York Times piece here by Michelle Goldberg. Ooh. And wait, what is the, what is the title of this uh, article here? Since Wait, hold is... on. Have you read that article, Fake Alaska? No, oh, wait, hold on. Have Can you read you it? No, hold on. Can you shut the fuck up? I've read it. Thank you. Okay. And the title is We Can Replace Them. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, no. Whoa, it's real. Boom. Totally real. Total, total Yoba victory. Me magic moment. And then that just happened. In Georgia, a chance to rebuke white nationalism. Okay. This is look, about the runoffs. All sorts of people. All sorts of liberals are out there saying, "Yes, we can replace you guys." Like this is about the run. This is about the. Is it let me fucking talk. You yourself said I haven't talked, so let me talk, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, you haven't talked. I say three words, you interrupt me. Shut the fuck up. Okay, <laughs> listen. There's an anti-white agenda, bro. Like you, you can play all these little games. You can pull up your media matters PMs that you got, you know, from Jared Holt or Right Wing Watch, whatever. Like, good, good on you, dude. Like, it's really fake. It's really pathetic. You look like a little fucking worm. You're a fucking weasel. Um, cool. There's a war against white people. Holy European shit! White people, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> shut up. You're so right. Seriously, <laughs> shut up. Put the clock back on. <laughs> There's a war on white people in this country, and we're fucking sick of it, okay? We built this country. European whites built this country, bitch. Dude, okay? I, I, I totally agree with you. I, <laughs> actually, I found something right here, okay? I learned from yeah. you. There's a tweet, okay, from uh, Bungie, and it says, This week at Bungie, we're uh, replacing the flawless okay, okay. pool. So, so, Holy so shit, how, bro. How There's no fucking that? way. You're so right about this. In 1940, now it's 65%. How do you explain that? What do you and mean? You how do I explain that? Saying you should be ashamed to be white and you guys are evil and all that. Like the demonization is at an all time high. Brittany, what are we? Um, about? I'm out of here by 11, right? What are we doing? How many oh, questions? Yeah, see, Destiny's feeling the heat. Yeah, he better leave before I get I need up. to go make some more Hispanic babies tonight, He's okay? I gotta get no! out of here, okay? I gotta, no, you I gotta, can't. I need to destroy this country, okay? I'm feeling the, yeah. the call. No, with the sweet. You, you guys can't prove that wrong. There's an anti white agenda in the media. It's everywhere. We can all see it. No. Delete, okay. So to, to bring this all around, okay, I, I do agree no. that there can be an anti white agenda um, in terms Let's of how go! people are speaking. Let's go. In terms of. In terms no. of. In Total terms of. Total victory. Total yeah, victory. Shut up, Rose. Shut up. Of, yeah, in sure. terms yeah, of fuck Disney how people are switching speaking on me, social media and how people and how people are are treating those people in the United States. Yes, okay, the exactly. problem though is that I'm willing to condemn my side when they engage in reckless rhetoric that I think can foster hostilities towards other groups of people. But it seems like you guys are unwilling to do the same. No, when people we, get out and they say things, people when people get out, we, oh my god, I got another minute. Thank you. When people yeah. get out and they say shit like all cops are bastards and your vote doesn't count for anything and these guys aren't going to listen to us, we need to take the violence to their neighborhoods. I'm critical of people on the left that say shit like that because then you get stuff like the BLM riots. But I wouldn't go and, and, and just, you know, cast aside all of the rioters as being mentally ill. Much the same, I wouldn't expect you when a kid literally is saying, here is all the right-wing propaganda that I read, here are the battle plans that I drew, and here am I driving to and executing black people and saying I'm sorry to the white people. I wouldn't expect you to look at that kid and go, oh, well, <laughs> um, I mean, he, I, I, he's mentally ill. I don't Obviously, think anyone said he... Mental illness was the only factor. Like, well, hang on. <laughs> hang on. The BLM riots were yeah. rambunctious blacks. Okay, that's totally different. And <laughs> Destiny, your reckless rhetoric on the left did not cause the BLM riots. That's just that's just black people wilding out. I think we we'll all agree with that. One, I think we all agree Antifa, with that. Antifa are not black people. A lot of Antifa violence, was, a lot was of, white a people. lot of the violence and a lot of the stuff, a lot of the shit that what? was caused. Who did Rittenhouse shoot? Nick. Antifa. Yeah, well, they weren't black people, were they? Yeah, three white two people. guys. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Three white people. 
You can't say it's all black people. This it is like Jack. Pas really are you? Am I debating Jack Posobiec and Ian Miles Chong? <laughs> <laughs> the umbrella, the umbrella, dude. They were like all black. Are you kidding me? Oh, they were too all, all Jewish anti. That if you want people on the other side to recognize the recklessness of some of their political rhetoric and the downstream effects of certain statements they make, which I think we should. I think we should be critical. Yeah, fair. Well, that's fair. On your side, yeah. When you know, okay, fuck. Maybe it's not a good idea to post memes about how Jews are trying to replace white people, or maybe like that type of humor could lead to even a mentally ill person. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he is a little bit mentally fucked. Because yeah. you know what? You probably got to be a little mentally fucked at 18 to get an assault rifle, write the N-word on it, and go shoot a bunch of people. Probably a little bit mentally fucked. We can agree with that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, there's, me, probably me other, me. there's probably oh, other driving that, forces that. there too, right? Mental me illness can be a conduit to enact that. other things like political violence. So I think it's good to be aware of me, that. Me and Nick have both spoke out against that. Like Rose brought up earlier and like Nick said about, you know, what he says on his show. Like, here's the thing. Yes, people can go off the fucking deep end with a lot of shit. On your side, on our side, like, we never said that. This dude obviously hated black people. You know, he got into some weird shit. You know, we don't agree with it, you know, and it is wrong. So, you know, I, I hope. Sure, but then at the end of the day, you have to look at who's cheerleading what, right? So I think that I, we never I, have, I, so, so I, like, I'm trying to be relatively consistent on my platform over the past few years. I'm like, okay, hey, listen, violence probably isn't the answer. Violence probably is a good thing. Right. And on the other end, you two guys are at the Capitol screaming that we need to evict no, lawmakers from the White House or from the Capitol building. Right? From the law, I'm Destiny, just, excuse no, me. I'm just, I'm just the lawmaker I'm moles, just saying, okay? I'm just saying, we maybe in retrospect, maybe in retrospect, maybe nobody retrospect. even died at the Capitol except maybe for the cops maybe. killing people. There were, maybe so in I retrospect, like at the Capitol, that means that I maybe mean, it, it's not that you like streaming the Capitol, so you were picking up the phone shouting that we needed to fucking stop the election. That shit was a joke, a dude. That was on Jimmy all Kimmel. They're all jokes. Just yes, I'm a fucking troll, dude. You know that. You go. Way I thought more. you were. Hold on, wait. I, the other day you were saying you were. The other day you were saying you were a serious alternative media journalist. Now you're just a troll. I know. I compared myself to Jake Paul. You. Bitch, is are Jake you, Paul a journalist Jake, too? Is that is he now? Like, I compared myself to Jake Paul. That's a come serious. on. We're doing so well. We were doing so well before. So well, we good. only do well when we're well, willing to make. Or I no, 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 no. You know, well, let me ask you though. Let me ask you, Destiny, I because I, I want to know. So you you point out the speech on the Capitol or whatever. I mean, wh what do you think? our culpability is for uh mentally ill people doing things that they don't even attribute to us i mean because i i think you have to be reasonable if you're going to be reasonable enough to say okay well maybe he's a little bit mentally ill you know i question because i see what you're saying and i get it and i agree to some extent but you know i think on my show i make jokes and I, uh, you know, it's an entertainment show. So yeah, it is, there, there are a lot of jokes, but there also is a lot of serious political commentary. As far as political commentary goes, I believe, I have a high degree of confidence that it is, it's pretty easy to discern what's serious and what's a joke. And as far as the serious stuff goes, I never advocate for violence. I never advocate for sure. um, Here, it's like, that kind of thing. Of, have you heard of Poe's Law? No, what's that? Uh, uh, like an audience that gets its laugh by pretending to be idiots will pretty soon find themselves in the company of idiots, essentially. It's like, it's, I think it might even be an internet adage, but oh, I, I, I get it. I think, yeah, yeah. That. So, essentially, so now I'm now I'm a man to man. Okay, give me your advice. I know you're a bit younger, <laughs> been around my, the block. Oh, okay, my older sure. brother here. Yeah, right. older, your older Hispanic, BFF. autistic, <laughs> older Hispanic, autistic brother. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. just like as a, a thing that I consider, okay. I think that there are times in my audience when I'm making jokes and it's obvious that I'm making jokes, depending on the flavor of jokes that I make, eventually like thought will change. There are mm. things that I think are legitimate jokes. I bully the fuck out of women all the time on my stream and we hate women on my stream. You know, I love that about you. But but I don't actually hate women. I'm sorry to say. I will. Boo! I know. I know. It sucks. I actually don't hate women. I love women. I love and respect women. But if I make Ugh. enough jokes, if I make oh, enough wow. jokes over a long enough period of time, I will find that my audience will automatically hate women. So I'm just saying that, like, we're getting people that are running outside with guns and shit. One of the things that made me dramatically alter my rhetoric, I don't think that I inspired any BLM shit directly. But I think that it wouldn't be inconceivable to find out that people in my audience would have been part of some of those riots, not the protests, but the riots themselves. So when I see people acting that way, I'm like, maybe it's not enough to just have a disclaimer at the beginning of my four hour rant about how evil cops and conservatives are. Maybe I actually need to be more aware of my rhetoric so that when those rioters are rounded up and arrested and people go through their YouTube history, they're not going to find my videos because people that watch me won't even have those ideas in their head because that's not the kind of things they're thinking of. That's just yeah, you know what? Uh, that's honestly fair. And 
and um <clears throat> And I, I not about the shooting so much, but I'll, I'll give you like an example. Like um, when we were doing AFPAC three this year, I remember Stu got up on the stage and he was Stu Peters and he went off and some people thought it was funny, but he was going up there and saying like, you know, Fauci should be on hanging on the end of a noose and, and a lot of like legitimate anger. And I think that one of the, one of the things that I like about my show and like the movement that, has grown out of my show is that it doesn't it doesn't have the same anger that the alt right had it doesn't have the same it doesn't have the same kind of like giddiness about violence or there's hate. like a path forward with af that doesn't just involve violent revolution killing all of the fucking right well and, yeah. and it's also not about hate right. it's also because like a lot of the alt right used to sort of revel in like they used to call richard spencer's place in alexandria the hate lair and and I think there there's some truth to what you're saying about the Poe's Law concept there. And I remember when I saw the Stu speech at AFPAC 3, I didn't like it. And it, it it made me feel uncomfortable because that's so not like the energy of AF is talking about like, you know, we make jokes, but getting up at, at the stage at our annual conference and saying, we want to see someone hang and we love that they're going to burn in hell. That's not the spirit of the show. And I'll admit, you know, when I, to you know, because I'll be fair and reasonable if we're going man to man. Uh, when I saw that, it did. I, I did take a step back and go, you know, people are clapping at that. And I was like, gee, you know, like that's not that doesn't really sit right with me. That's not really what I'm about. And and then I got up on the stage at the end of the night and I said I, I basically corrected him. I got up there and I said, well, you know, any any jerk can get up and talk about killing. Yeah, that's not what we're about. And um, and I got like a standing ovation when I said that. And so so I'll admit there there's truth to that. I would just dispute that in this case. I don't think there's any ambiguity about like shooting or killing people, but wait. But so the, Nick, when when you said I want people that run CNN to be arrested and deported or hanged because this is deliberate, bruh. what does what does that mean? Are you kidding me? You know, me and my older brother here, we're trying to have a man to man family portrait, family reunion talk, and you're like, but five years ago, that's from April 2017. But five years ago, you said what I meant was they should be tried for treason so when you say hanged stuff. what does what does hanged mean they should be tried for treason that that was the is that what hanged means was. hang good yeah. he didn't say lynched he didn't say lynched yeah you get you get hanged after you get uh, convicted for treason so um so i lost my train of thought but i was saying um about the uh what was it about uh, the Peter steve guy you went in you said you weren't happy non-violent you, you know yeah, that's yeah, a big yeah. thing with and you. uh i don't know i, I there's one more point i had to make but then you hit me with the glow i believe the globalists the run cnn the, okay now that one i retract i was like 18 at the time that was like i'd been doing my show for two months you got to give me a you know a pass on that one but uh oh 18, the point is Ill at that point basically hey i'm 18 right now i take I responsibility for what i, I said neuro, i am neurodivergent Destiny, do not laugh at me. <laughs> you and me, brother, we're neurodivergent. We're like the X Men. We're like the X Men. We're one day, one day, all these neurotypicals are gonna fucking pay. You and me. You know, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm like Magneto. You're like Professor yeah. X. Uh -huh. They're like an X Men that autistically commits to memory quotes from the movie Joker. I want to be that guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm no, that's me. I already have that one. You could be the okay. other. You could be the uh, other one. Okay. <laughs> So when like like the so we all agree, right? Let's not get our fans to like kill people. Can we agree on that? You know, I'm a lover. A I'm idea. a lover. I'm a sweetie pie. So you, you're against but, uh, all uses of of force, then, Nick. You are. That's like a big yeah. no go for. Okay. So then, when yeah. last year you said our founding fathers would get in the streets oh, and they would take this country hour. back by force if necessary, does that does that does that how does that square if, with that? If necessary, if ne it's not necessary. But now. you said it was off the table. Well, if it's necessary, what if it's necessary? Okay, I yeah, I mean, if we're using those circular... Go, like, gun to uh, my head, gun to my head. It's necessary, you know? Uh, if, if I'm yeah, getting... If about, I'm getting about, uh, about election fraud. That's what. what the, that's the context of this statement. Situation. Boo. You know, you're an enemy of the truth. You're an uh -huh. enemy of humanity. Yeah. Ro Rose wrist. Uh -huh. More like twisted sicko. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> more like gross and sick. Wait, yeah. I can make... Hold on, hold on. Nick, 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 Nick. Okay, I got something for... Okay, gross, sick... <laughs> I know that there is like I, I can make this a bit better for you. Gross I think, and twisted. I think this is what you prefer a bit more, right? Yeah. Stuff like this. Oh, this is like your is. more yeah. your aesthetic, oh, yeah. more your vibe. Oh, am, no, am I less gross talking. now? 
Am I less now twisted now? Talking. Is this your thing? Oh, man. You, that yeah. was a big mistake, man. Now I'm bricked up. Now there I'm you go. Up, yeah, there we go. See, I can also, I can play, I can play ball with you guys. I can, now I can it's time kind. for some sexual violence. You know, we had enough political violence. Oh, no. no. Well, there we go. All right, Brittany, Q&A. What are we doing?